Entering Apocalypse in Easy Mode Summary The Earth you know will end in six days. After the text appeared the world was no longer the same. The apocalyptic scenarios that humanity could imagine began to occur one after another. Monsters, meteors, natural disasters. All of them came after the six-day countdown ended. Fortunately, humans are given something to fight back. Or actually to make things much more interesting. They became players. No one knows who is behind all this. Humans have no other choice but to survive amid this chaos by playing. But Clyde didn't live it like the others. Because he was the only human who had the lowest difficulty in the end time game. He plays in easy mode, and he already read this kind of thing in web novels. Except, there are no such thing as regressor in those web novels. Until he met them. Wait, I only hit that monster once and it died right away. Whoa, I got an A-grade weapon right away. There are. Four regressors. How is Clyde's journey in this apocalyptic world with the lowest difficulty? Chapter 1 Countdown to Apocalypse The Earth you know will end in six days. A transparent text accompanied by a mechanic sound suddenly appeared on the bus. Clyde, a glassed high school boy widened his eyes. His reaction was almost the same as the people on this bus. They were all confused and terrified. What does it mean? A man wearing a neat suit shouted. What's this? A girl asked her boyfriend. I don't know. Her boyfriend said while holding the girl's hand, trying to calm her down. All those voices of panic and fear were heard throughout the bus. Clyde spread his eyes around and swallowed his saliva. Shit, what the hell happened? Clyde thought to himself. He had not imagined that this day would actually happen. Apocalypse scenarios like what he read in online literature. It was something Clyde often imagined in his spare time. He spends his time reading apocalyptic novels, watching apocalyptic movies, and playing apocalyptic games. Clyde liked the scenario where the world would be destroyed. Either by a zombie outbreak, nuclear war, or monsters. The Earth has been very close to apocalyptic scenarios for a long time and imagining what scenarios will happen is just a fun thing to do. However, Clyde never imagined that the apocalyptic scenario that would occur was something so far from predictable. A red letter that floated like a notification pop-up window in the game appeared. Clyde knew that the text was real. Unlike these people who have a hard time believing it. Because he had read it in a web novel. Something like this is very familiar to him. After a while, Clyde finally calmed down. On this bus, he was the only one who can be calm. Not because he felt he could handle this apocalypse, but because Clyde was ready if he have to die. His life wasn't a pleasant one that he wanted to keep it longer. He was bullied at school because of his difficulty in socializing. Although Clyde is quite smart, he is just being exploited. His parents divorced and they already have their own families. Leaving Clyde to live alone. They only send him money every month. Clyde had always wondered why they bothered getting married and having children when they ended up throwing him away. Clyde was always looking for an opportunity to die but he was too scared to kill himself. Eventually, he immerses himself in video games and web novels to escape reality. Why didn't the bus stop, asked an old woman in front of him. Clyde also wondered why the bus didn't stop. He had guessed that, maybe that was because the bus driver had also seen the transparent writing in front of him. Then an idea popped into Clyde's head. Maybe something happened to this bus and its driver, Clyde muttered in a very low voice. You think so? Clyde turned his head when he heard a voice. He saw a girl wearing the same uniform as him staring at him. A. Eh? The girl had straight shiny black hair. Her face is small and cute. Her expression looked troubled making her face look even cuter. You talking to me, asked Clyde. Of course, said the girl. Clyde stared at the name tag on her chest. Askses. Clyde thought she had heard the name somewhere. Possibly at school. But he didn't know who this girl was. I don't know, answered Clyde. Maybe. What do you think this is? the girl named Isksa asked in a panicked voice. Perhaps subconsciously, she moved closer to Clyde. As you can see. The world is coming to an end, Clyde said flatly. Oh, God. Isksa starts shedding tears. What should we do? Clyde looked at her dryly. Too bad he met such a beautiful and cute girl in such a situation. Clyde's luck had never been good so he couldn't help but sigh. At least the last sight he saw before dying was Isksa's face. Suddenly, Another line of transparent text appeared before Clyde's eyes. 
the text was also read and floated in front of him. Like the interface window he had seen in video games. Asksa and everyone on the bus seemed to get the same window. Because they stared ahead with shocked eyes. Suddenly, a thought appeared in Clyde's mind. If there was such an attribute window like this, there was a chance that they wouldn't die right away. This looks like a game, or a scenario. Maybe we should play. He also reads something like this in web novels. A very famous one. Clyde's originally pessimistic feelings turned to optimism. If it's about games or scenarios. Maybe he has a better chance to survive. The shape of Clyde's attribute window looks pretty simple. Character information. Name, Clyde Cross. Race, Human. Age, 17. Level, 1. EXP, 0 slash 100. Private attribute, easy mode player. Exclusive skill, inspection, LV.3, weapon mastery, LV.1. Skill point, 0. Player stats, strength, 3 tenths, stamina, 2 tenths, agility, 3 tenths, magic power, 5 tenths. Stat point, 0. Inventory, 1 gold starter pack. Equals 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 equals. What's this? Asks's panicked voice woke Clyde who was observing his attribute window. The girl was very confused. It seems she had never seen anything like this at all. So did most of the people on this bus. Suddenly while everyone was panicking, a screen appeared under the red text. The screen looked like an LCD screen. However, the absence of a projector made Clyde think that it must have something to do with what was happening right now. The form of a man with glasses appeared on the screen. He smiled greeting everyone like a friendly host. Good afternoon, Earthlings. Are you ready for the 69,399 editions of the end of time game, said the man on the screen. Clyde listened intently amidst the panic. When he glanced out the bus window, everyone outside the bus was also staring at something in front of their eyes. Everyone goes through the same thing thought Clyde. Who are you? What happened, asked a man who looked furious. Stop this bus. A young man walked up to the driver, but he immediately backed away when he saw something terrifying. Clyde guessed that the bus driver got the same thing. Or worse. Maybe he was already dead. The young man sat back down. Ha ha ha. Don't worry. The bus will stop and the first chapter will start. I'll just give you a small guide to make things easier for you. First, you have an attribute window that you can check at any time. Inside the attribute window is your status in this end times game. All players will start with a level 1 status. Level 1 is your current state. As the game progresses, you will get status points and skill points which you can use to upgrade your power. Clyde stared at his attribute window. Surprisingly, he had a status that was at a level above 1. Everyone except me I guess. Something else that caught his attention was his private attribute which read easy mode player. Was it because of that choice he made three days ago? Chapter 2 The Prologue Three days ago. Clyde rubbed his eyes with both hands. When he looked at the corner of his monitor, it was already six in the morning. Clyde raised his glasses and yawned. Today it seems I didn't sleep again. Just like yesterday, Clyde was playing games until he lost track of time. He was online from night till morning. He did it all, for one thing, to drive away loneliness. Clyde hastily showered and put on his uniform. Then he went to school with mixed feelings. Going to school was not something he was happy to do every day. Clyde is not good at socializing and making friends. His gloomy appearance also made him shunned. Clyde was smart. Because of that, the students in his class would be friendly to Clyde when they needed someone to copy the homework from. From then on, Clyde no longer wanted to show his intelligence. Being bullied also became his daily life. Clyde was no longer fighting back and let the bullies do what they wanted. Clyde wasn't too eager to do anything in this world anymore. His life is not something to be proud of. When he walked to the bus station, Clyde always passed by a large river. The river seemed to split the Askia city area into two. Every time he passed by the river, Clyde saw the current and asked himself, should he jump now? However, Clyde hadn't done that yet. The river current was too strong, or maybe he didn't want to die just yet. Clyde didn't know which was the right reason. But one thing is obvious, he didn't do it today. Not today, Clyde muttered. Then he continued. 
When he got home, while eating cup noodles, he turned on the computer and played the game he played lately. The Day Comes was an apocalyptic type game that he had been playing for over a year. In this game, Clyde must survive a zombie outbreak. A classic theme that never goes out of style. Unfortunately, the game wasn't popular at all. The Day Comes is a game with pixel graphics. According to Clyde, it makes this game fun. But it seems that most people in this world don't think so. Clyde also reads several apocalyptic web novels with almost the same themes. Fighting monsters, surviving in some kind of magic apocalypse or virus, etc. The Day Comes, the game he played, is created by the same developer who created many more games. However, all of them are not so popular. In essence, all of it is about the destruction of the world. Suddenly when he died in the game, an incoming email notification appeared. Clyde frowned and raised his glasses. The email comes from the developer of the game he often plays. Clyde opened the email. Dear player, the Ender would like you to complete the following survey for further development. Clyde shrugged his shoulders and immediately filled out the survey because his in-game character was dead. The Ender is the developer of those games. Do you like apocalyptic scenarios? Yes. Clyde sighed because this question was so useless. If he doesn't like it why is he playing their games? Please select one of the following options. After that, choice after choice appeared. No more questions. 1. It is alright if the apocalyptic scenario happens. 2. No, it's not alright. Clyde went straight to number 1 without a second thought. If this is for the next development of course he wants this game to continue making apocalyptic games. 1. The world needs to be reset. 2. The world is fine and does not need to be reset. Clyde snorted. Number 1, of course. Last question. Oh, is it over? Clyde was surprised. It turned out that this survey did not contain as many questions as he thought. 1. You want to go through the apocalyptic scenario with the hardcore mode difficulty. 2. You want to go through the apocalyptic scenario with the easy mode difficulty. Clyde immediately chose option number 2 without thinking. He doesn't like to take things too hard. Real life is hard enough. Why would he want to add more difficulty to a game? Thank you for filling out the survey. In the next development, you will be given the advantage when it started. Sincerely, The Ender. Oh, do I get some bonus pack? After that, the survey ended. Clyde closed the email and continued playing his game. Present day. Clyde was still not sure if the survey he was filling out at that time would affect what was happening to him now. But it seems like a possibility. The bus just stopped. All passengers got off the bus. Some immediately ran away. But Clyde just stood quietly. After all, if the apocalypse had started, where could they run to? The girl next to him didn't wither. Her face tensed and she looked back and forth like a confused person. Attention. The prologue will start now. The voice accompanied by red text echoed in everyone's head. A big commotion ensued. Clyde was quite confident. Judging from his stats and the resource bag he had, Clyde was pretty sure he could survive better than the others. The prologue underground monster begins now. Prologue, underground monsters. Difficulty, C. Objective, survive attacks from monsters appearing from underground. Suddenly, the ground shook like an earthquake on a small scale. After that, the ground started to crack and from within the cracks, black and skinny hands appeared. Black and skinny bodies crawled up. They were monsters with ant heads but walked on two legs. Their bodies are as big as humans. Scree. The monsters gave off a disturbing screech when they saw humans. The girl who saw the scene covered her mouth with both hands. Her eyes opened wide in horror as the monsters from deep in the ground began to tear apart the unlucky people. Suddenly, Clyde got a notification for himself. Private attribute effect, difficulty changed to D. Clyde smiled. Nice. A monster crawled from the crack behind the girl. She didn't notice because she was too deep in fear. The monster raised its hand and then pointed its claws at the girl's head. Clyde who saw it cannot remain silent. He ran towards the monster and then dealt a punch to its stomach. Buick. The monster was blown away after being hit by Clyde's punch and crashed into a trash can. Clyde grabbed the girl's hand and led her to hide in an alley. Hide. Clyde said. Chapter 3. Checkpoint. Clyde immediately moved and placed the girl behind him. The ant monster chased them into the alley. 
It seemed that their attempts at hiding were in vain as the monster saw them enter the alley. Okay then, let's see what I can do. Clyde realized that he had a skill called inspection. So Clyde used it. Instructions on how to use the skill were not explained. No tutorial is given at the beginning. But Clyde had a rough idea about it. Clyde intended in his mind to use the skill. Inspection, LV.3, activated. After that, he could see the stats of the monster in front of him. Monster information. Name, Black Ant. Affiliation, Underground Monster. Level, 1. Skill, Bite, LV.2, Slash, LV.1. Stats, Strength, 1, Stamina, 1, Agility, 2, Magic Power, 0. Weakness, Fire. Affinity. Rank, CD. Equals 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 equals. With inspection skill, Clyde could see the stats, weaknesses, and even affinity of the monsters in front of him. Clyde concluded that the change in the monster's rank must be due to the exclusive attribute he possessed. Scree. The monster lunged at Clyde. Clyde didn't run, instead, he lunged back at the monster. The ant monster opened its clawed jaws to snatch Clyde's head. But Clyde's hand which had formed a fist was aimed at the monster's head. Bruig. The ant monster's head was instantly destroyed by Clyde's fist. Black liquid splashed onto his face and shirt. You gain 5 EXP. The girl's eyes widened at Clyde. How did you do that? Uh huh. Clyde himself was amazed by his strength. I just hit him. She was still staring at Clyde with eyes of awe mixed with horror. Especially when she saw Clyde's face which was covered in the liquid from the head of the monster he had just destroyed with a punch. Clyde took off his glasses. He realized that he could see well without glasses now. Is this also the effect of my stats? Clyde wondered. Then put his glasses in his pocket. Clyde looked out the alley. People were still being slaughtered by those ant monsters. Some can defend themselves by running or fighting. Because this monster is relatively weak. What will we do now? Asked the girl. Let's wait here a moment, Clyde replied. Then he used inspection on her. Character information. Name, Star. Race, Human. Age, 17. Level, 1. EXP, 0 100. Private attributes, Witch Doctor. Exclusive skill, Healing, LV.1. Skill point, 0. Player stats, Strength, 1 7 Stamina, 1 7 Agility, 1 7 Magic power, 3 10 Stat point, 0. Inventory. Equals 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 equals. You have the ability as a healer. That's quite amazing, said Clyde. Is that so? But I don't understand. The girl shook her head in confusion. The point is, you can heal people. Just like the name implied. Asks's eyes opened wide with hope. Is that true? Yes. Clyde nodded with a smile. My name is Clyde, by the way. I'm Asksa. Asksa smiled. Clyde felt a little surprised at the change in Asksa's expression. Saving Asksa is probably a very good decision. She has the ability of a healer. Having someone who could heal wounds would come in handy. In addition, she is also extremely cute. That is a nice additional point. Clyde looked at his inventory. He opened the gold resource bag which looked like a bonus pack specially made for him. Clyde often sees bonus packs like this given specifically to a player as compensation for certain things. It immediately made Clyde wonder. Does the Ender, the game developer, have anything to do with this incident? Everything that was happening to him right now seemed to lead him to that thought. When he opened the resource bag, Clyde's eyes widened. A great weapon, Elder Glass Sword, upgradable. High grade health potion, X3. Medium grade mana potion, X3. 10,000 coins. The items he got were quite good. This is a gold resource bag after all. Maybe the highest resource bag there is. He even got an A grade weapon. Clyde will his mind took the weapon from the inventory. Suddenly a sword appeared in his hand. Clyde drew the sword from its scabbard. The blade of the sword was like ice frozen to form a sword. Clyde could see right through the blade. It is about one meter long. And it's probably five centimeters wide. 
The sword is very light in his grip. Where did that sword come from? Again, Asksa asked innocently. Don't worry about that now. We have to go, Clyde said. As Asksa's trust in Clyde had increased, she nodded obediently. They both came out of the alley running. From Clyde's experience reading web novels, there should be some sort of checkpoint available where they can be safe. But without any clues, Clyde thought finding checkpoint would be difficult. Abruptly, monsters rushed at them from several directions. Asksa screams in fear. But Clyde immediately slashed his sword at the monsters. With just one slash he could kill them. Even Clyde didn't give off any significant strength. The stats he had were too strong for this level. Clyde realized that maybe he was the most powerful person in this city right now. In the middle of the journey, Clyde did not know when exactly but Asksa was holding his hand tightly. They kept walking but unlike the others who ran in panic and fear, Clyde and Asksa walked like a couple spending the weekend. Hey, shouldn't we quickly find a hiding place? Asked Asksa who felt that they were too relaxed. What for? There's no safe place around here. Clyde stretched out his sword to point around. The buildings were crawled by giant ants. Several corpses lay on the streets in torn condition. Asksa sees some people locking the doors tightly and pushing out other people asking for help. I didn't think they could be that evil. This disaster changes a person, Asksa said as she snuggled close to Clyde's body. She also gripped Clyde's hand harder. Either consciously or unconsciously. Clyde snorted. This disaster doesn't change people. This disaster only reveals their true nature. Asksa turned her face to look at Clyde. As if shocked by the answer. But Clyde was only busy slashing his sword at the monsters that kept charging at them. Why can you be so strong? Ask Asksa. Well, said Clyde. I chose easy mode. Clyde answered honestly. However, Asksa did not understand the meaning of that answer. So she chose to remain silent. Suddenly, while they were walking while Clyde slashing monsters, they saw a red text floating above the subway station. Checkpoints. Ah, there it is. Come on. Clyde pulled Asksa towards the subway station and they went inside. You have entered the checkpoint area. Asksa turned her head, she saw the monster chasing them turned away, and ran in another direction. Are we safe in this place? Asksa asked with a slightly relieved tone. Clyde looked at her. We're safe from monsters. They went down the stairs and saw that there were already a lot of people gathered at this station. They were people from all categories who finally came together to avoid disaster. But there's another threat to come, added Clyde. He knows how human nature is. Especially those who are under pressure. Chapter 4 Boss Clyde slid his sword into the scabbard at his waist. He and Asksa walked slowly through the crowd. The people here stared with curious eyes but also didn't really care. Assuming the two teenagers are a couple caught in the middle of this disaster. However, someone was watching from behind the crowd. Someone noticed the weapon on Clyde's waist. The girl narrowed her eyes. There's no way that sword was picked up on the street. Some people had brought their weapons. Some carry pipes, pruning shears, self-made spears, and so on. Everything they get on the street. They will take anything to defend themselves as best they can. But no one managed to get a sword. Moreover, the sword on the boy's waist looked good. The sheath just looks normal. The plain black color without any ornaments. But the girl could see the powerful aura surrounding it. All because of the skills she has. Standing up slowly, the girl followed Clyde and Asksa from behind the crowd stealthily. Let's sit here first, said Clyde. They both sat in the corner of the station. Asksa's eyes looked at everyone in here sadly. But given that there was nothing she could do, Asksa could only sigh. While Clyde was flat-faced. He immediately thought of what steps he would take next. If this is a scenario, then there must be some kind of objective that they have to complete to finish this prologue. But what he saw in that floating text message was, that they just had to survive. But for how long? Suddenly Clyde heard Asksa's belly grumble next to him. He turned his head and saw Asksa's face was red, looking down. That's not me, Asksa said in a low voice. Clyde snorted. I'll try to find some food. Clyde stood up and looked around. Then he found a vending machine. There's a vending machine. Wait here, said Clyde. Aska nodded. Clyde walked over to the vending machine. He saw several pairs of eyes paying attention to Asksa. It is natural because Asksa is indeed a cute girl. 
if this was the usual situation Clyde wouldn't be worried because they wouldn't dare do anything in public places. But this is an apocalypse. Humans can be very brutal because they are desperate. Moreover, before this disaster occurred, even depraved humans already existed. I have to hurry thought Clyde. Clyde just had to move quickly to the vending machine and take the food back to Isksa. After he finished buying some snacks and canned drinks, Clyde immediately walked back to Isksa. But suddenly a group of men had gathered around Isksa. Seeing this, Clyde begins to rush to her. You alone, asked one of the four men. We can protect you if you want to come with us. Isksa seems to be getting restless. But when he saw Clyde approaching, she became relieved. Clyde. Isksa called. Clyde walked his way through the crowd of men and nudging them to make way. If the world still went on as before, Clyde definitely wouldn't be this brave. But he knew that now he was much stronger than everyone else. So there's no reason to be afraid. You okay? asked Clyde. Aska nodded. Yes. Hey, kid. Weren't you taught manners? one of the men shouted at Clyde. His demeanor had started to become aggressive. Clyde faced them with a calm expression. It's best if we don't make a fuss. In a situation like this, wouldn't it be better if we just cooperated? Despite saying that, Clyde was sure that what he said would not change their original intention. The man snorted. He spread his arms and received a pipe from his friend. Clyde sighed. He thought, don't they see the sword at my waist? Or do they think the sword is just a toy? Asksa retreated behind Clyde. Stop it. Can't you see I have a better weapon? Clyde pointed at his sword that was still hanging from his waist. Ha ha. It must be just a toy sword you pick up to scare people, right? The man asked disdainfully. Clyde shakes his head. There's no point wasting time talking common sense with these people. So Clyde drew his sword. Sheeting. The sound as the sword was drawn was much louder than Clyde had expected. Everyone who could hear the voice turned their head. Including the girl who was observing from afar. You fools, thought the girl. But that's good too. So I can see what the sword looks like. Clyde pointed his sword at the man. This sword is very real, said Clyde flatly. The three men behind him looked at each other. As if reconsidering the life decisions they took to get to this situation. The man holding the pipe started to retreat. They just left without saying anything. Clyde slid his sword back into its scabbard. Everyone turned their faces away. As if they didn't want to be seen watching him. I can't believe it. There are still people like that during a disaster like this, said Isksa. Yeah, sorry to leave you earlier, said Clyde. Aska shook her head. That's okay. Aska started eating the snacks that Clyde bought. A voice accompanied by floating text came out again, startling everyone. Prologue, Underground Monster. Progress, an egg has appeared at the Rosary Junction. Then the video screen appeared and showed a large egg appearing in the middle of a large crossroads. That's the Rosary Junction. The egg was probably about three meters high and pitch black. Clyde had a rough idea of what they should do next. Objective, in the eggs there is a boss. Destroy the eggs before hatching or beat the boss after IT hatches to complete the prologue. The commotion began. Everyone was confused and panicked. Of course, they panicked because another monster would appear. And seeing the word boss on it, it was clear that it was the monster that would be their biggest challenge. What should we do? Asksa asked in a frightened tone. Don't worry. Clyde smiled at her. Asksa didn't know what exactly Clyde was going to do because he didn't say much. But seeing what had happened so far, Asksa had faith in Clyde. Chapter 5 To the Boss The conditions for this so-called prologue to be completed are by destroying the eggs before they hatch, or defeating the boss when it hatches. Even people who had never played a video game would know that defeating the boss before it hatched would be easier. Then the commotion started getting louder and louder. The people at the subway station are confused about how to finish this chapter. Clyde looked around. This is what happens when there is no OR someone to rely on. But he also doesn't want to be relied on. Even though Clyde knew that he could be the strongest person here, he knew that being strong and having a leadership spirit to lead desperate people were two different things. You want to destroy the egg alone? Asked Asksa next to him. Clyde turned. We have no other choice. Asksa wants to say something. But she pursed her lips again as if cancelling the intention to say that. Clyde was someone he just met. Even though Asksa feels safe around him, they are not friends. 
Asksa doesn't know what Clyde is thinking and what could possibly offend him. Don't worry. I won't leave you, said Clyde. Asksa didn't know why Clyde did that. Why would he go to the trouble of protecting her? But Asksa chose not to say anything as she too was relieved. This was an opportunity she had to take to survive. Even though others weren't as lucky as her, what could she do? Asksa tried to avert her eyes from the confused and frightened people. And... Excuse me, I hope I'm not disturbing you guys. Suddenly a girl walked up to them with a friendly smile. She was wearing a black leather jacket and jeans. There was also a black liquid on her clothes. She must also have struggled to live to this point. Can I help you? Clyde asked. I was thinking maybe we could work together. This whole thing must be hard to do just the two of you, right? The girl said. Clyde looked at her with a furrowed brow. Why did this girl suddenly approach them? Asksa looked at Clyde as if asking him for an answer. You want to be our ally? Clyde asked. Straight to the point. Ah, of course, said the girl. My name is Sonia. Nice to meet you. Inspection, LV.3, is activated. Clyde used inspection on her. Character information. Name, Sonia Reed. Race, human. Age, 19. Level, 1. EXP, 55-100. Private attributes, Shadow Ranger. Exclusive skill, Stealth, LV.1, Weapon Mastery, LV.1. Skill point, 0. Player stats, Strength, 1 8th, Stamina, 1 9th, Agility, 2 tenths, Magic Power, 2 eighths. Stat point, 0. Inventory. Degrade weapon, compound bow, upgradable. Equals 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 equals. Clyde was quite impressed. As soon as he saw the attribute window, Clyde knew that this girl had pretty good abilities. In addition, she has also been able to put her weapons into the inventory. That meant that she must have quite an understanding of this attribute window system. Clyde felt that having a useful ally would be advantageous. He wouldn't trust her. But he can use her ability. You can join. Hearing that, Sonia looked happy. Thank you. I hope we can work well together. Sonia said. Sonia immediately spoke to Isksa. She seemed to be trying to get close to Isksa. Meanwhile, Clyde just turned his head and stared blankly at the crowd. Thinking about what he could do with this addition of his new ally. Every now and then Sonia saw Clyde. He seems a bit unapproachable. Wait. Clyde suddenly said. The clear condition only says that if the boss is defeated, then the prologue will be over, right? Yeah, but not necessarily. People who participate and people who don't participate, you think that would be the same? Sonia said. You're right, Clyde replied. Let's go. The three of them walked up the subway. Clyde immediately explains that Asksa can't fight and has the ability of a healer. So the two of them had to protect her. Sonia of course nodded in agreement. You have left the checkpoint area. Crowds of monsters started to rush at them as soon as they got out of the subway. Sonia picked up the bow from her inventory while Clyde drew his sword. The two of them pierced through the crowd. We have to run, said Clyde. Sonia and Asksa nodded. They ran through the crowd of monsters. Sonia killed monsters easily enough so Clyde felt that his decision was right. Along the way, Clyde and Sonia also level up several times due to the number and ease of their killing monsters. Only Asksa hasn't leveled up because she didn't kill a single monster. They finally arrived at Rosario Junction. The black egg stood upright surrounded by hundreds of giant ant monsters. We go there. Clyde who saw another checkpoint pointed them in there. A checkpoint is provided when they want to face the boss. Clyde thought that this world was getting closer to a game. You have entered the checkpoint area. This area is a convenience store that leads to the junction. So they can see the egg easily. When they entered the convenience store, there was a strange vending machine inside. Instead of selling food, the vending machine sells something else. Skill purchasing machine. Clyde immediately walked over to the vending machine. Asksa and Sonia follow him. On the transparent glass, instead of looking at snacks, Clyde can see a list of available skills by price. There were no warnings about the skills they could or couldn't choose, so it seemed the players could choose freely. For now. You have the coin to buy skills. Ask Sonia. 
Yes. I have some coins, replied Clyde. What are you going to buy? Clyde remembered that the monster had a fire weakness. So Clyde immediately bought a skill that he thought would be useful. Put your hand on the coin holder to buy skill. Make sure you have enough coins. As soon as he heard those words, Clyde put his hands together. Try eating. Skill burning hand purchased. 1000 coins used. Sonia's eyes widened. You have 1000 coins. Yes. A silver tube came out and Clyde opened it. Orange colored light shot out and entered Clyde's body. I still have a few coins left. What do you want? Clyde asked. Sonia's eyes widened with a gleam of happiness. She didn't expect Clyde to offer it. Are you sure? Clyde nodded. Make sure the skills you buy are useful. And don't go for the expensive ones. Sonia smiled and nodded. Then she immediately chose a skill that she had been aiming for. Chapter 6 Already Hatch Her hunch wasn't wrong at all. Joining the two of them was truly the right decision. Skill Hunter's Marker Purchased 1000 coins used. Clyde handed the silver tube to Sonia. Sonia accepted it with pleasure. She immediately opened the tube and a purplish ray entered her body. What are you doing? Asked Isksa who was confused looking at them all this time. Sonia and Clyde turned to her. We bought a skill. Um, it's a kind of magic ability, Sonia tried to explain. Sorry, Isksa. It's not that I don't want to buy you one. But for now, there's still nothing that suits you, Clyde said. Ah, it's okay. Besides, I can't help you either, replied Isksa with a sad smile. You don't have to worry about that, Clyde smiled faintly. Sonia wondered if the two of them were dating. She admits that Isksa is cute. So naturally, Clyde would like her. If that's true then Isksa is much luckier than her. How are we going to destroy it? Sonia asked. I'll go straight ahead. You, support me from behind with your bow. Isksa can wait here, Clyde replied. Clyde drew the sword from his waist. Let's go. The giant egg began to hatch. A crack appeared and got bigger. Clyde knew he couldn't waste any more time and immediately ran towards the crowd of ant monsters. Sonia summons her bow from inventory into her hand. Isksa, hide in this store. Don't come out until we're done. Do you understand? Sonia said to Isksa. Isksa replied with a nod. Sonia left the convenience store and locked the door. Clyde ran and slashed his sword. The movement was so fast that the ants couldn't react. The number of ant monsters was probably over a few hundred. And they all worked together to surround Clyde. Preventing him to get any closer to the egg. Clyde made a circular motion with his sword. The movement cut off dozens of ant heads around him like a sharp knife slicing through a sausage. Sraight. Sraight. Clyde spun, jumped, then fell into the crowd of monsters. Then he slashed again. The sword seemed to stick to his hand and Clyde was sure that it would not slip from his hand even if he twirled the sword. This is what Weapon Mastery Level 3 can do. Its clear blue blade reflects the sunlight like a mirror. Making this battle look even more like a battle in a fantasy fairy tale for anybody watching from afar. That's how Sonia felt. Seeing Clyde slashing down the ant monsters without a problem made her gape. If this is a real game, then he must be a cheater, Sonia muttered. Clyde thought so too. He feels like playing in Merpage game with only him playing it in easy mode. While others play it with the hardest mode possible. Too much engrossed in enjoying the battle he knew he had already won, Clyde didn't realize that he had already wiped out countless ant monsters. Trimming their number down to maybe a hundred. You leveled up. 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 So many notification sounds that indicate that Clyde has leveled up. However, he didn't rush to check his attribute window. Instead, Clyde walked toward the giant egg. But he soon noticed something strange. Crack. Crack. The cracks that appeared enlarged much faster. A black hand came out from inside the shell. Shit, did I waste too much time? Clyde kinda regretting it. But he didn't feel anxious. Maybe at least this boss can be quite a challenge for him. The ant monsters that were swarming around gathered together behind the boss that was about to hatch. Red light mixed with a dark aura emitted from the egg along with a shockwave that threw trucks, cars, lamp posts and everything around. Yet Clyde stood unwaveringly and only covered his eyes with one hand. His slightly long dark hair was pushed back. 
Sonia clung to one of the nearby poles and thought about going back to the convenience store with Isksa. She didn't have to do anything to help, Clyde could handle it himself. Any. C.O. Yes, that's better. Sonia made up her mind and then ran to the convenience store again. But before she arrived, from the ground appeared an ant monster that immediately grabbed her leg. It made Sonia fall straight down. Fortunately, the bow did not slip out of her hand. Shit. Sonia cursed and then turned around to shoot. One of her private attributes abilities, Shadow Ranger, allows Sonia to create arrows directly at the bow. So she doesn't have to worry about running out of arrows as long as her magic power is sufficient. Take this, you damn ant. Sonia shot her arrow right into the ant monster's head. Sonia then released her leg from the monster's black hand when the monster died. Scree. Abruptly, the screams of the ant monsters became louder and louder. They all seemed to be speaking in unison. Sonia turned and saw Clyde still standing in front of the egg. Meanwhile, the creature from inside the egg began to crawl out. The eyes of the ants around turned bright red. It wasn't long before the boss was finally freed from its shell. Scree. The boss was in the same form as the surrounding ants. It's just that it's twice as big. On its head, there is also a pair of horns like bull horns. On the boss's forehands were sharp claws like daggers. The ants around calmed down when their king had appeared. Fuck. Sonia immediately stood up. I need to get out of here. Sonia ran back to the convenience store faster than before. Suddenly Sonia heard a big bang. She stops. Then she saw Clyde slide and hit the highway creating several holes. He was bouncing several times before finally hitting the building and coming to a stop. Clyde. It was clear that Clyde had been hit by the boss. Sonia was worried. However, her worries didn't last long because Clyde had risen again. He took off his torn uniform. The originally flat-faced Clyde was grinning. A moment later he disappeared from where he was standing. Boom. As soon as Sonia turned she saw Clyde and the boss facing each other. Clyde's sword collided with the boss claws. Shockwaves spreading everywhere. Sonia was surprised that Clyde could move so fast she couldn't see his movements. Clyde had already fought the boss. Their movements were so fast and destructive. This is not something I can get involved with. Sonia ran into the convenience store like her life depend on it. Because it is. Chapter 7 First Boss Defeated Clyde remembered the first time he entered high school. A boy who wears glasses because he's staring at the PC monitor too much. A boy who is too thin and pale because he always spends time in a dark room. It all provoked the bully to go after him. Bullying doesn't just mean being beaten up or ridiculed with harsh words. But anyone who chooses to walk away when he's been treated unfairly is also a bully. Clyde didn't blame them. He too, wouldn't even bother to defend the victims of bullying when he sees them. But Clyde didn't like their actions either. Sometimes he wants to be defended. But back to reality, the figure of a hero in the real world doesn't exist. The heroes were created in a fictional world to fill the fantasies of the oppressed person like him. Clyde even refused to ask his parents for help. Two people who had the heart to throw him out of their lives and create a new family. And so Clyde had run out of hope in humanity and the world. His teenage emotions can't handle that treatment. He felt that the world was supposed to be hit by an apocalypse. Not for a good reason like, the world should be destroyed and returned to start over as a better world. Clyde just wanted the world to fall apart. That way everyone can feel the misery in life like him. Back to the present. Hey, hey, hey. Clyde hit the giant ant boss until he flew through several buildings. Now Clyde was on top of the building. The heated battle brought him here. He was only wearing trousers that had holes in them. His shirt had been destroyed. But Clyde smiled. He felt happy because he turned out to be so strong. The feeling he had when he could step on the boss monster so easily was delightful. On the crushed asphalt, the black ant boss stood. Its body was already battered and oozing black liquid. The light in its eyes was even dimmer than before. Suddenly a fireball shot toward him. An explosive sound was heard and the asphalt shattered and burned. Boom. But the boss had jumped before the fireball hit it. Clyde fall off the top of the building and landed on the road. He spread his eyes around to find out where the boss was. The ant monsters that had been away from the battle area suddenly started charging at Clyde again. Clyde snorted, disdainfully. This must all be the boss's attempt to defend itself. But Clyde instantly slaughtered all those ant monsters like before. 
his clear blue sword flashed along with the black liquid of the ants. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. Rain continued to level up while taking care of the monsters. Then he saw the boss in front of him. The ant boss was eating its underlings. When it finished eating, the wounds on its body began to heal. Clyde who saw it dashed towards the boss and then spread out his hand that wasn't holding the sword. Burning hand, LV.3, is activated. Clyde who had used skill points to raise his burning hand shot fire at the boss. The boss shouted and his underlings charged forward to form a wall of ants. Clyde's flames burned them and scorched them to ashes in an instant. The boss ran away and crept into the building. But Clyde shot through the flames and thrust his sword forward. Great. Clyde's sword pierced its body and they both fell onto the ground. Black liquid gushed out from the wound inflicted by Clyde's sword. Clyde grabbed the ant boss face and pressed it against the asphalt. Clyde smirked at the ant's eyes which glowed red and looked terrified. Burning hand, LV.3, is activated. Asterisk swoosh. Asterisk. Flames shot out of Clyde's hands and spread in all directions creating a heatwave that scorched everything around them. Once the fire was ended, Clyde no longer gripped the boss's head. When he raised his hand, what was there were black ashes. Clyde stood up. A chime-like rhythm of tone resounded in the air. The sound of an announcement followed. Congratulations to player Clyde Cross for defeating the boss Black Ant King. Clyde smiled. Finally, he could feel what it was like to win something with his own strength. He walked back. Rewards for defeating the boss sent to inventory. Reward, B-grade equipment, Dark Knight Coat, Defense, LV5, 1000 coins. Clyde walked into one of the clothing stores that were still intact and picked up a black shirt and black jeans and a pair of boots. The clothes he was wearing were already torn as a result of the battle. After that, he took the Dark Knight cloak and put it on. Clyde saw himself in the mirror's reflection. Dark shirt, dark jeans, a dark coat, and dark boots, plus a sword hanging from his waist. Clyde smiled contentedly admiring his appearance. He likes black and has wanted to wear an appearance like this for a long time ago. But if he wore it, then he would only be considered a freak. But now, no one will judge him. As soon as he came out of the shop a voice was heard. The prologue, underground monster has been completed. Players who participate in killing the boss will be given the key item for the next chapter. The next chapter will start tomorrow. Tomorrow, this disaster will continue. Clyde felt calm in the face of this apocalypse. This was quite strange since he was probably the only person who was grateful to face this apocalypse. Clyde doesn't want to be a hero who will settle things so everyone can be saved. He just wanted to feel the joy of being the strongest person in this apocalypse. Asksa and Sonia had already exited the convenience store and were staring at the approaching Clyde. You're still spending some time shopping, said Sonia, looking Clyde up and down. My clothes are torn. What can I do? Clyde shrugged his shoulders. You okay? Asksa asked in a worried tone. I'm fine, Clyde replied. What will we do now, asked Asksa. Hmm, Clyde thought. We'd better find a place to stay first. They started walking again amidst the rubble. Sonia looked at Clyde and wondered what kind of reward he got for defeating the boss alone. Sonia could tell that the coat he was wearing contained a strong magical aura. That means the black coat is one of the rewards he gets. As long as I follow him I'll be safe. Sonia thought of using Clyde for her own safety. Clyde could take on the monsters alone without help. Sonia just needs to be near him and she will be fine. Behind Clyde and Asksa, Sonia smiled at her luck. Chapter 8 A New Party The three of them walked through the ruined highway. But the monsters were nowhere to be found. After defeating the boss, it turned out that the monsters had indeed disappeared. It was still noon and the hot sun was shining on the ruined city. The three of them walked silently without saying anything. In six days the world they knew will be destroyed. Those words echoed so clearly in everyone's head. Even the first day hasn't started yet and everything has turned out like this. Clyde figured things would only get more difficult. Not only Clyde but Asksa and Sonia felt that way too. But both girls were relieved to have Clyde by their side. For whatever reason, Clyde himself felt that having a healer and another comrade who could attack would be quite useful. Clyde knew he was strong enough. But it's still the prologue and there are still six more days for this apocalypse. Then after those six days, he didn't know what will happen. Will the world really end then they will die? No, that's not possible. 
Clyde thought there was some purpose to all of this. The world you know will end in six days. That's how it sounds at the beginning of this apocalypse. The world you know. Does that mean there will be a new world created, thought Clyde. He didn't think long. Even though a new world would indeed be created later, he didn't think that the new world would be any better. The world that humans still live in will never be ideal. Clyde is also human and he is aware of his flaws. Suddenly there was a car coming from the opposite direction. The car was a roofless sedan in black color. As soon as he saw the three of them, the driver of the car slowed down. They were a group of three men and one woman. They all carried their weapons. Only three of you. Ask the man driving the car. Yes, Clyde replied. The man looks at Isksa and Sonia. Then back towards Clyde again. I heard there's a boss around here, the man said. But once we got here, there was no sign of that boss. What happened? Someone's beaten the boss, Clyde replied. The man furrowed his brow. The three of his colleagues also gave a reaction that was not much different. They look confused. Who is that? I don't know, said Clyde with a shrug. Try checking on the subway. It's a checkpoint so a lot of people are gathering. The man thought for a moment. Then after seeing the approval of his three friends, he nodded. Okay thank you. After that, the car started again leaving them. Why didn't you tell the truth? Asked Isksa innocently. That would be very troublesome, replied Clyde. Come on. Isksa was still confused by Clyde's answer. But Sonia immediately spoke to her and distracted the girl. Sonia and Isksa spoke quite casually as if they were old friends who had not seen each other for a long time. Clyde was grateful that there was another girl so he wasn't too awkward being with Isksa. RD.NBSP, CM. Unfortunately, his inability to talk to a girl greatly hindered his progress to make them his trustworthy companions. That roofless sedan could no longer pass through the ruined highway. The four people also know that this is all the result of a fight. That's very strange, said Mona, the only woman in the group. No one should be able to overcome the boss in the prologue other than us. Yeah, you're right. Too bad we showed up in another city, Eric said as he looked all over the place. Even so, I'm a little grateful because it means that not many people died. That guy said that there were still a lot of people on the subway, right? Reed, one of the men, said. But who can beat that boss, asked Rodney. He was the man who was driving the car earlier. The question left the three of his friends speechless. Could it be? Mona mumbled. Even so, her voice could be heard by her three friends. They all turned to Mona as if thinking the same thing. There are other regressors besides us. Regressor. They are people who revive again after death. However, they will only come back to life at the beginning with the knowledge they gained before dying. Those four people were regressors who had lived through this apocalypse until the fifth day. But they always die before reaching the sixth day. The four of them had repeated all these five times. And they knew what would happen until the fifth day. Each time they regress, it becomes easier for them to complete chapters. But on the fifth day, there was something they couldn't beat and always sent them back. This time, for the sixth time, they were repeating everything from scratch. But something strange happened. The boss in the prologue has been defeated. It never happened before. It could be, said Reed. In the beginning, I thought I was the only regressor. That might be the case. Don't you guys feel weird about those three teenagers? Asked Mona. Yes, the three of them look too calm. Especially the young man dressed in all black, said Eric. Could it be that he is the regressor? Reed asked. Rodney was silent and thinking. The newly created variable means that the situation could be out of control. And the variable that can beat the boss is a big variable. What should we do? Reed asked Rodney. No one formalized it but they acknowledged Rodney as their leader. Rodney looked in the direction they came from. The three teenagers were already gone. It's too late to follow them. We should have done that earlier, Rodney said. Now we better head straight to the subway. I'm sure we'll see them again. His friends immediately agreed and they walked again towards the subway. We might as well stay there tonight. Sonia pointed to a motel in front of them. Clyde agreed to her proposal and they headed toward the motel. They find an abandoned motel. The condition of the motel was not exactly good. There was blood splattered in several places along with body parts and corpses. In addition, the furniture has also been overturned and destroyed. However, some rooms are still locked. 
As soon as Clyde forced the door open, the room was still clean and tidy. This place is pretty good, said Clyde. We can rest here. Do we can only just wait? Sonia asked worried about tomorrow. I guess so, answered Clyde, as curtly as ever. Chapter 9 The Quest's Carriers Dusk has finally come upon the ruined city. The city's landscape wasn't as beautiful as before. Instead, it gives off a depressing atmosphere to whoever sees it. But for tonight, no one wants to go out to see the atmosphere of the city. They prefer to huddle inside the checkpoints area that is spread out at several points in the city. The four regressors arrived at the subway a few minutes ago. The atmosphere here was no different from what they had seen in previous lives. Fear. Fear dominated these people until they were unable to move even an inch. They didn't want to die but were too afraid to fight. Nothing prepared them for a situation like this. Who knew that their normal life could turn into chaos like it is today? The four regressors circled the subway but all they saw was a bunch of depressed people. There was no sign of someone having beaten the boss. If such a person, or such a group, did exist then they would be regarded as heroes and revered. They're not here, Rodney said. Yeah, I think so too. Mona agreed. That means our guess was right. Not necessarily, said Eric. Anyway, it's getting dark so we can rest here for the night. Also that person will appear in a moment. Rodney reminded them. His three friends nodded in understanding. They sat together in one corner of the subway. Several pairs of eyes stared at them with various feelings. But then they ignored them. The existence of a weapon in each of their hand made people who wanted to get closer reluctant to do so. Mona still felt that feeling even though this had happened so many times. She and the other three regressors didn't know why they got that power and were able to come back to life when the other humans died. Luckily, Mona has grown up without her parents, if that could be considered luck. She didn't feel the sadness like Eric who lost his wife and child. Reed who lost his parents in his hometown, and Rodney who planned to marry his girlfriend today. Mona saw the three of them look broken when being resurrected in the same place. They intend to save the people they care about. But they can't and when the fifth day came, they would all just die again and see the same thing. That's when they knew that nothing could be done before this disaster was over. Maybe when this is over, they will be back to those moments. You will get what you desire if you can win this game. That's the only motivation for them to move forward now. A man in black glasses said that and gave them a purpose. Several hours passed and finally, night came. As night fell the people on the subway started forming groups to go out. The monsters weren't there until tomorrow and some people took the initiative to look for food and other items. One of them, a man with a seemingly well-trained build and a short haircut, indicating that he was a veteran, came up to them. Would you like to come along, asked the man. No, Rodney answered. I see you guys look prepared. You guys have your own weapons too. I'm guessing you already have food in your backpacks, don't you? The man said. Yes, Rodney answered without even looking at the man. The man seemed to tighten his jaw. But he didn't say anything. It would be very helpful to us if you would help, said the man. No. CM. Again, Rodney answered curtly. You will die soon. There's no point in fighting. The man gave up and left them. He regrouped with his colleagues and then exited the subway. Carrying makeshift weapons. They shouldn't be able to calm down tonight. Monsters should still be roaming the streets outside the checkpoint area. But since the boss had already been defeated during the day, so the number of the monsters is decreasing. Whoever had defeated that boss, he had definitely made the situation easier for them. When night falls, someone will come over to the checkpoint area or other places where there are players. They will always find the whereabouts of players wherever they are. They came to give a task to anyone who would accept it. Like this time. After a few minutes, a man wearing a neat suit and dark glasses came down the stairs into the subway. Several people who don't go outside looked at him in confusion. It wasn't just because of his strange appearance. But because of a red exclamation mark above his head. He's coming, said Eric. The four regressors approached the man. Good evening everyone. Would you like to accept the quest, asked the man. Show me the list of the quest, Rodney said as he approached. Mona, Eric and Reed walked behind him. The man smiled. All right. Clyde who was observing his sword with a look of admiration was surprised to hear a knock on the door. He walked towards the door while holding a sword and opened it. A woman in a black suit and dark glasses smiled at him from behind the door. 
Clyde of course noticed the exclamation mark above her head. Usually, such an exclamation mark is shown by an NPC who will give the quest. But Clyde wasn't going to open the door too wide until he knew for sure. Who are you? Clyde asked. Good evening. Would you like to accept the quest, asked the woman in an unnaturally cheerful tone. What quest? Clyde still wasn't sure. A quest is. I know what a quest is, Clyde cut in. What I'm asking is what should I do and what is the reward? The woman was still smiling. The glasses she was wearing plus her weird cheerful tone made Clyde feel uncomfortable about the woman. You can get coins, skills, or equipment. It depends on the difficulty of the quest you take, the woman explained. Suddenly the next room door opened. Asksa and Sonia came out and approached Clyde. That woman also came to us earlier. I didn't understand what she was saying so I told her to come to your room. Asksa explained in a hurry. Oh, I see. All right, Clyde replied. Then Clyde looked at the woman. Can I see the quest? The woman took a few steps back and then waved her hand in front of her face. After that, a list of quests appears based on their rank and reward. Chapter 10 Silver Lunar Wolves Clyde looked at the list of quests and immediately chose the one with the highest rank. That is rank B. It seems that on this first day the highest rank of quest only reached rank B. Are you sure, the woman showing the quest asked with that unnatural cheerful tone. Clyde was almost certain that she wasn't human. Are you sure, Clyde? Sonia approached and asked in a surprised tone. Of course. With that, we can get the best possible reward. But I'm not sure that I can help complete this quest. You don't have to worry. We'll do it together. Clyde's words made Sonia feel relieved. Although she knew beforehand that Clyde would indeed say that. I'll take the difficult part. After adding that, Clyde nodded in agreement once again to the woman with the dark glasses. The woman said nothing and nodded. Another screen appeared confirming that Clyde had successfully taken the quest. When the quest is completed, the reward will be received immediately. Since this is a hunting quest, the quest will be completed when you finish killing the target, said the woman. Okay. The woman walked out of the motel and then disappeared into the shadows. Rain, Sonia, and Asksa looked back at the screen showing the details of the quest. Quest. Quest category, hunting quest. Clear condition, hunt down silver lunar wolf. Rank, B. Time, sunrise. Reward, B grade equipment, 300 coins. Are you ready? Clyde asked. He saw Sonia nod. But Asksa who was behind Sonia looked unsure. Asksa, are you afraid? asked Clyde. Asksa did not immediately answer. Instead, she bit her lip nervously. She didn't want to be a burden to them so she had to try to fight too. But all this was too scary for her. Monsters, death. Asksa still can't get rid of her fears and get used to it all. You have to be tough, Clyde said, looking at Asksa. The world you know no longer exists. If you want to survive, you have to try and strengthen yourself. You understand. Hearing Clyde's words, Asksa's body suddenly straightened, almost stiff. Her eyes were on Clyde. Asksa swallowed her saliva. A all right, Asksa said. Clyde nodded curtly then went inside to retrieve his robe. After that, he walked out of the motel. Asksa and Sonia followed behind. Was I being too hard on her just now? Clyde thought about his words just now. Clyde sighed. He just wanted Asksa to be stronger. What he had told her earlier was the actual situation. Clyde couldn't say that everything would be fine even with his power. Because he wasn't sure he could protect Asksa forever in a dire situation. In the beginning, his intention was just to make use of her healing ability. One thing Clyde learned in his life is that nothing always goes smoothly. At some point, eventually, there's bound to be something that messes things up. That's why Clyde tried to prepare everything once they were still in the early stages. By taking the quest with the highest rank, he could get the best rewards at this stage. Even with the easiest mode, Clyde still thought of making his preparation well. Because he thought that later there would be circumstances where he would also find it difficult even with easy mode. Once the three of them got outside the motel, the moon shone brighter than usual. Clyde looked up, the moon was perfectly in full round shape. Suddenly the air turned cold. The wind was blowing a little bit stronger, fluttering Clyde's black coat. What happened? asked Sonia anxiously. Something must be going on right now. Abruptly, 
a roar rang out from every corner of the city. Clyde, Sonia, and Asksa looked in all directions looking for the source of the sound. That sounds like a wolf's howls, said Sonia. Well, the quest details say that we have to hunt a monster called the Silver Lunar Wolf, said Clyde. Sonia looked at him. Is that true? Sonia didn't remember because she only schemed through it. Clyde drew his sword. Let's find the wolf. Sonia pulled out her bow from the inventory and followed Clyde. Sonia also held Isks's hand which was beside her. Honestly, Sonia felt sorry for the girl. She didn't look like someone who could endure a situation like this at all. Isks was busy biting her lip and looking around her with eyes that explained fear. But what can she do? Clyde's words were true. She had to be able to get herself stronger if she wanted to survive in a world that had become like this. The three of them headed in the direction the wolf's roar came from. Clyde suddenly stopped in place leaving Sonia and Isksa confused. However, their confusion was soon cleared. On the roof of an abandoned shop, there was a wolf with silver and sharp fur like a big needle standing. The wolf fur that looks like it's made of glass reflects the moonlight making it seem glowing. The wolf was about the size of an SUV. Its eyes were blue and also seemed to glow. Inspection, LV.3, is activated. Once Clyde used inspection he was able to see the stats of the monster. Monster Information Name, Silver Lunar Wolf Affiliation, Lunar Monster Level, 5 Skill, Frost Claw, LV.3, Frozen Fur, LV.3 Stats, Strength, 3, Stamina, 3, Agility, 5, Magic Power, 2 Weakness, Fire Affinity, Ice Attributes Rating, B, C Private Attribute Effect Activated Clyde smiled. With his private attribute, he didn't have to worry too much. The monster's rating has changed from B to C, which means all of its stats have also dropped. Clyde turned to Sonia. Attack it from afar. I'll attack from up close. You can't beat that monster on your own like before, asked Sonia. Maybe this one will be a little difficult. Clyde didn't feel that this would be difficult for him. He just had to make sure that Sonia's fighting ability was good enough. Clyde immediately advanced toward the monster. Sonia pulled her bowstring and an arrow was created. What should I do? asked Isksa in a worried tone. Uh huh. Sonia was confused about what to answer. Just hide. Isksa immediately ran to find a place to hide. Sonia looked at her who was running like a desperate person. Then looked back at the monster. Unexpectedly, while Clyde was running over to Wolf above the abandoned shop, another wolf monster appeared from the crossroads. It was the same silver lunar wolf as the one in the shop. Clyde. Sonia shouted. Clyde turned his head and saw another monster running towards Sonia. Chapter 11 Another one. Why there's two of them? Clyde's eyes widened at the sight of another wolf rushing towards Sonia. They were already quite far apart, did Clyde still have time to save Sonia? Clyde immediately turned around and ran towards Sonia. However, the silver lunar wolf had already noticed Clyde's existence. The wolf jumped from the top of the shop and landed in front of him. Shit. Clyde cursed. He gritted his teeth. He wouldn't be able to save Sonia in time. The wolf in front of him opened its mouth and was about to grab Clyde. But Clyde immediately dodges by jumping backward. On the other hand, Sonia was already running to avoid the wolf that chasing her. Sonia's running speed was much faster than a normal human because of her private attribute. Fuck fuck fuck. Sonia screamed in her heart. She jumps between abandoned cars and trucks nimbly. Wolf in her back chases her and destroys cars and trucks with its claws. The sound of trucks and cars being thrown was very loud in the middle of the night. Then Sonia turned into an alley. The wolf jumped and immediately landed right in front of the alley where Sonia had turned. But the wolf didn't see her. The alley was too narrow for it to enter, so the wolf just sniffed Sonia's presence. However, even with his keen sense of smell, the wolf couldn't find her. Sonia was still in the alley. She stared at the muzzle that had entered the alley and sniffed like a predator looking for its prey. The reason why the wolf couldn't find Sonia was because she used her skill. Stealth. With that skill, Sonia could eliminate her existence. Sonia was relieved that she had the skill. Sonia drew her arrow and aimed it at the wolf's eyes. Hunter's marker, LV.1, is activated. Sonia's eyes glowed purple. She had marked the wolf as her prey. That way, 
the damage from the attacks she inflicted on the wolf would be doubled. S.Y.U.T. Sonia's arrow shot and hit the wolf's eye. The big wolf jerked back and groaned in pain. Sonia creates another arrow and then shoots again. Unfortunately, the arrow bounced as soon as it touched the wolf's fur which turned out to be very tough. Damn it. Sonia cursed. In that case, she had to aim for the other eye to deal damage to the wolf. But the wolf was moving wildly through the streets because of the pain. This opportunity was used by Sonia to get out of the alley and go to a more suitable place for aiming. Suddenly a sedan came out of the intersection. Sonia turned and realized that it was the car they had seen this afternoon. The car stopped and four people got out. They couldn't see Sonia because she was still using stealth. There are two silver lunar wolf, said Reed. The four of them saw a man fighting one silver lunar wolf and another one who was moving wildly with arrows stuck in its eyes. Which one is ours? asked Mona. There was no way of knowing which silver lunar wolf for their quest was. But amid the confusion, Rodney came up with a solution. If we can kill those two monsters. Whichever it is won't be a problem. His three friends immediately agreed. They took the same quest. Sonia, who was quite close can hear them. Reed, Mona, you help that guy. Eric and I will fight the other wolf, Rodney ordered. They all immediately agreed and started to move. Who exactly are they? Sonia wondered. Ah, it doesn't matter now. Looks like we're on the same side so it's a good thing. Sonia moved and walked over to the two men who were walking toward the wolf she had just shot. She disabled stealth and appeared behind them. Hi. Rodney and Eric turned around and brandished their weapons. Rodney brandished a black katana while Eric brandished his short sword. In Eric's other hand, there was a round shield. They all looked at Sonia warily. Who are you? How did you appear all of a sudden? asked Rodney. I put the arrow in that wolf's eye. But we don't have time for long introductions now, do we? My name is Sonia and let's kill the wolf first, Sonia said. Eric and Rodney looked at each other. Then lower the weapon. Okay, come on. Rodney said. The three of them ran towards the still raging silver lunar wolf. On the other hand, Clyde was trying to dodge the silver lunar wolf's claws which were continuously moving fast without giving him any openings. Some of the claws managed to hit him. But the dark night coat he was wearing gave him strong protection. Despite being scratched several times, Clyde suffered no injuries. Suddenly the wolf stopped attacking. Its clear looking fur swelled up and then shot toward Clyde as hundreds of ice needles. Clyde spread his arms. Burning hand, LV.3, activated. Clyde's hands were enveloped in flames. Then the flames shot forward. The ice needle hit Clyde's torrent of flames and disappeared in an instant. With his left hand shrouded in flames, Clyde stood before the wolf. Previously he had a hard time attacking because the wolf moved so fast. Now it had stopped and given him enough distance. Now it's my turn. Clyde grinned. Clyde spread his arms, and flames shot toward the wolf and instantly enveloped it. However, the wolf immediately dodges Clyde's flames. Clyde didn't let it escape too far. He ran after the wolf. He added stat points to agility and now his agility was at level 6. That way, Clyde could catch up to the wolf with ease. Mona and Reed who previously wanted to help him stopped on the spot after seeing what Clyde was doing. Burning hands, muttered Reed. That's burning hand, right? Mona saw it too. At this early stage, he shouldn't be able to buy burning hand. But they knew that what they saw was indeed burning hand. Yes, Mona answered and he's so fast. They saw Clyde catch up with the wolf and slash his sword. But as they had expected, the sword bounced against the wolf's clear and tough fur. Knowing that Clyde put his sword in its scabbard and decided to fight with burning hand. Now both of Clyde's hands were covered in flames. Then he threw two fireballs at the wolf. The fireball hit the wolf and shattered its tough fur. Does he need help now? asked Reed, feeling helpless. Mona who also saw what Clyde had just done was taken aback. Who exactly is that guy? Chapter 12 The Other Fight Boom! Explosions and heat waves spread out in all directions. Clyde had just sent a fireball bigger than before toward the silver lunar wolf. But its tough fur proved to be able to withstand the attack. Growling. The wolf growled as it brandished its teeth. Then its two fangs extended beyond its lower jaw. The fangs almost looked like frozen tusks. In addition, the wolf's fangs are not shaped like usual teeth. 
but it is clear like a block of ice sticking out of its mouth. Clyde grinned. He felt like he was going to get an exciting fight now. Clyde landed on the roof of a shop. His hands were still covered in smoldering flames. He saw two people standing and watching the fight from a distance. Hey! Don't worry about me, shouted Clyde. You guys just deal with the other monster. Mona and Reed looked at each other in bewilderment. It seemed that the man didn't need their help. So instead of wasting time here, they'd thought it was better to help Eric and Rodney. The two regressors didn't think for too long. They immediately ran towards another battle and left Clyde alone with his wolf. The wolf suddenly jumped at Clyde. Behind him, he left frozen trails. Clyde greeted it by throwing fireballs the size of footballs. But the running wolf jumped to the side and was able to dodge the fireballs well. Clyde noticed that the wolf was getting faster and more agile. Yet he felt with this power, the wolf still couldn't beat him. The self-assured Clyde lunged fearlessly. He's confronting the wolf monster head on. Bang! Clyde collided with the wolf. His hands hit the wolf's two front paws. Clyde could see its clear jaw and fangs right in front of his face. But Clyde still grinned. This fight made him feel excited. Clyde also knew that his strength was enough to hold the wolf head on. This is my strength. The grin on his face grew wider. Flames shot out from Clyde's hands. The wolf screamed and jumped back. Clyde dashed forward towards him and punched the wolf with his hand covered in flames. Buick. The wolf was tossed and bounced across the street before stopping. As soon as it got to its feet, Clyde was already in front of it and hit the wolf again. Makes it bounce even further. Is this supposed to be rank B? Ha ha ha. Clyde caught up with the wolf and prepared to hit it again. However, suddenly the wolf opened its jaw. Clyde's eyes widened. He wouldn't be able to escape. When it came to that conclusion, instead of looking for a way to dodge, Clyde stretched his arms forward instead. Chomp! The wolf's jaw grabbed Clyde's hand. Now Clyde's hand was inside the wolf's mouth. He felt a chilling sensation begin to rapidly spread throughout his body. Ice appeared and started to freeze the part of Clyde's bitten hand and the frost spread throughout his body. Luckily, Clyde was wearing a dark night coat so his body wasn't affected by the frost. Now they were both locked in this situation. However, this is exactly what Clyde wanted. The hand that was inside the wolf's mouth was still covered in flames. Clyde smirked. As if realizing how dangerous the situation was for it, the wolf's eyes widened. Unexpectedly smoke rose from inside the wolf's mouth and hot air came out. You'll give me a good reward, Clyde muttered. As if to say goodbye. Asterisk whoosh. Asterisk. Flames shot out from behind the wolf's head breaking through its body. The wolf's body fell helplessly. The cold blue light in its eyes dimmed. Its frozen fur began to melt. Clyde pulled his hand away from the wolf's jaw. Turns out he didn't suffer any injuries. Wow, this coat is amazing. Clyde admired his black coat. A notification appeared before Clyde's eyes. Quest complete. Dot reward, B-grade equipment, hone silk coat, 300 coins. Rewards sent to inventory. After receiving the notification, Clyde nodded in satisfaction. He wasn't very interested in the B-grade equipment he got because it wasn't a weapon. Clyde thought maybe he would give the coat to Isksa. He walked towards another fight. However, as soon as he got closer, it turned out that their fight was not over. Clyde decided to look from afar. He wanted to see how capable the four of them really were. They didn't look like ordinary people. Instead, they looked like experienced people in these situations. That raised a question in Clyde's mind. How can they be this calm and ready to face the apocalypse? Seeing how they fought, seemed to confirm Clyde's suspicions. The four of them did have experience. Are they related to the Ender like me? Clyde couldn't rule out that possibility. Maybe they also know that there will be an apocalypse like this. Clyde had no idea what the Ender was. There's no way they're just ordinary survival game developers. The Ender might have been also involved with these four people. He had to find out later. Suddenly, Asksa came out and approached Clyde. Clyde is quite surprised to realize Asksa's presence. Have you defeated the monster? asked Asksa while looking in all directions. Clyde glanced back. But that silver lunar wolf's corpse had already disappeared. Yes. I've defeated our monsters. In fact, Clyde didn't actually know which wolf was for their quest because suddenly another wolf appeared. But it doesn't matter. 
the important thing was that he killed the silver lunar wolf and the quest was complete. Oh, right. Clyde withdrew the B-grade equipment he had just obtained. It was a soft white coat that was the complete opposite of his. For you. Clyde held out the coat to Asksa. What's this? Asksa's eyes widened as she accepted the coat. Put it on, said Clyde. Asksa wears it. As soon as she put on the coat, a notification appeared before her eyes. Equipment effect, magic power plus one. Magic power plus one. Aska frowned. That must be the effect of the coat. That means your magic power has increased by one level, Clyde explained. That's a good thing. Thank you. Aska smiled. She looks happy. Sure. You look good wearing that. Suddenly a scream was heard. The two of them glanced at the battle. They saw that one of the men from the group was bitten on the arm by the wolf. Then the wolf threw him until he hit the wall of a building. That doesn't look good, said Clyde. Let's go. He and Asksa ran together. Chapter 13 Suspicion Reed fell to the ground with his arm nearly severed. In addition, freezing also began to spread from the bite wound on his hand to the rest of his body. Clyde brought Asksa closer to Reed. Behind them, everyone was still fighting the silver lunar wolf. Clyde thought that another silver lunar wolf that appeared must be because these four people were also taking the same quest as them. But looking at their state, shouldn't they have thought a little longer before taking on a quest of this high difficulty? Asksa and Clyde saw Reed's condition. Reed himself was unable to open his eyes. The pain plus the freezing was unbearable. Asksa, do you know how to use a skill? asked Clyde. Asksa looks at him. Asksa remembers that Clyde said she could heal people but she doesn't know how to use it. Asksa shook her head. It's easy. You just need to will it in your mind to use the healing skill. Clyde paused for a moment as if thinking about something. Maybe you should stretch your hand towards the wound as well. Anyway, you have to heal him as quickly as possible. I have to help them. Ah. Before Asksa could say something, Clyde had already turned around and ran towards the fight. Now Asksa is left with this injured man. Seeing his almost severed hand made Asksa win CE between fear and nausea. But since Clyde said she could heal people, Asksa gave it a try. Asksa stretched her hand towards the wound. Then willed her mind to use healing. Healing, LV.3, is activated. A text appeared. Then warm white light started to come out from Asksa's hand and covered Reed's wound. The freezing that had spread throughout his body began to dissipate. Not only that, the tissue of the hands that almost severed started to heal. Reed slowly opened his eyes. His previously thinned consciousness now starting to return. As soon as he opened his eyes, he felt warmth on his sides and see the face of a beautiful girl. Who are you? asked Reed. My name is Asksa. Please stay, I'm trying to heal you. Her voice is also soothing. If this was the last sight he saw before he died, Reed wouldn't mind. Asksa's serious face lit up with white light. She pursed her lips and concentrated fully. Reed felt that the pain was starting to fade away. On the other hand, he was worried about his friends. It turned out that, things weren't as smooth as before. Previously, they deal with Silver Lunar Wolf by trapping it. But who would have thought that the monster would run away? Causing attempts to trap it to be futile. And now Reed was almost dead. Luckily there was a healer nearby. Reed raised his head to look at his friends. Reed saw there was a man dressed in black helping them. It turned out that Reed had nothing to worry about. Swoosh. The flames gushing from Clyde's hand made the wolf jump backward. Sonia. Clyde shouted. All right. Sonia who had been aiming fired her arrow. The arrow flew and went straight into one of the wolf's eyes. Grah. The wolf screamed in pain. What are you waiting for? Said Clyde to the three strangers. Attack. The three regressors looked dumbfounded by what Clyde had just done. However, they didn't let the shock last too long. Let's go. Rodney ran. Eric took over the front position and put a shield in front of his body. Silver Lunar Wolf branded its teeth. Just like before, its fangs extended beyond the lower jaw. The wolf then threw ice spears from its frozen furs. Eric, shouted Rodney. I got it. Eric's shield gave off a golden glow then the golden light expanded and condensed into the form of a light shield that was five times larger than his original shield. Mona and Rodney approached and took cover behind Eric. The ice spears hit Eric's shield of light and then fell to the ground. 
the three regressors continued their charge toward the wolf. Rodney and Mona ran to Eric's right and left. After that, their bodies gave off an aura indicating that they had activated a skill. Mona and Rodney apparently used the same skill. They slashed their swords, then from the slashes came out arcs of light that shot towards the silver lunar wolf. The two slashes hit its clear feathers. The damage they inflict is only not significant. Clyde noticed that they seemed to have experience in combat. It is evident from their movement. It was as if they had been prepared for this for a long time. This made Clyde even more suspicious. Not only Clyde, but Sonia also felt suspicious. Yet she was more curious about one thing. Sonia drew closer to Clyde. You can defeat that wolf monster alone. Clyde answered with a nod. His eyes were still watching the battle ahead. Why don't you help them? With your strength, the monster will be easily defeated. That's not our monster. You know that, right? Clyde said. N. M. Sonia of course also realized that the four strangers had taken the same quest as them. Now the four of them looked much better at dealing with the wolf. Earlier one of their friends made a mistake that caused him to be bitten. That mistake is unlikely to be repeated now. Sonia turned and looked in the direction the man had been thrown. It turned out that Asksa was with him. Asksa is healing him. Sonia asked. Yes. Clyde nodded. Sonia watched them for a moment. From this distance, the progress of his wound healing was not very noticeable. But Sonia was sure that the man was getting better. The silver lunar wolf let out another scream. This time its movement became faster. Clyde frowned. The wolf he had been up against had never been this fast. He entered red blood. Rodney shouted. What does it mean? Sonia asked Clyde. If this was a game, then red blood might be the stage where the monster had entered a critical stage. When entering a critical stage, usually the monster's stat will increase. Clyde just happened to kill the wolf before it entered that stage. He dropped the monster's HP too fast. Looks like it's going to be a little dangerous. Clyde walked over. Sonia followed behind him. The three of them seemed to be having a hard time. Damn, the trapping plan went awry. Reed was dead. Do we have to just start all over again? Rodney's mind was already thinking the worst. He had been concentrating on the silver lunar wolf in front of him ever since. He didn't even get to look at Reed. In this battle, if he diverted his attention even a little bit, then it would be over. At that moment Mona suddenly slipped from her footing. The wolf who saw her fall opened its jaws wide at Mona. Chapter 14 The Truth The wolf opened its jaws wide at Mona. Her eyes widened when she saw two rows of clear teeth and fangs that were ready to pierce her. Mona closed her eyes. Ah, I have to do it again. To think I would fail on the first day. Dank. A voice sounded in her ears instead of a fang piercing her body. When she opened her eyes, Mona saw a black coat fluttering in front of her. Clyde was holding the wolf's jaw with his sword. Then seeing Clyde's burning hand, the wolf jumped back as if on alert. Get up, said Clyde. Mona blinked a few times quickly. Before she could say anything, Clyde was already running toward the wolf. Let's go, he exclaimed to Eric and Rodney who were looking at him in confusion. Clyde could deal with the wolf monster himself. However, he didn't want to bother him too much because it wasn't his monster. Rodney and Eric immediately took action. They run to Clyde's right and left sides. Clyde himself slowed his pace and allowed the two men to attack at the front position. However, Clyde sighed when he saw how the two men were fighting. They were already experienced in dealing with monsters. But their strength was not enough to kill the monster. You guys should think a little more before taking on this quest. Clyde shook his head. Now there were even two of their members who were almost dead. That doesn't bode well for their abilities. Clyde was still activating Burning Hand ever since. His fairly high magic power level made him less anxious about constantly using skill. Clyde created a fireball in his left hand. Then threw the fireball at the wolf. Boom. Grrr. The wolf let out a scream of pain as the fireball hit it. Its feathers started to melt down. Rodney and Eric didn't waste this opportunity and attacked. The wolf had been weakened considerably by Clyde's fireball. Even the feathers that acted as armor had almost gone. Rodney and Eric didn't squander this opportunity and attacked incessantly. After several minutes of going on without Clyde's help, the silver lunar wolf for the quest was finally defeated. Rodney and Eric stood breathless next to the wolf's corpse. 
Clyde deactivated the burning hand and then plunged his sword into its scabbard. Then he walked over to Sonia. You didn't do anything, Clyde said to Sonia. Ahem. Uh -huh. Sonia didn't know how to answer because she really didn't do anything. Well, you've done it all. So. Clyde just sighed and then turned to look at Asksa. Asksa seems to be doing a good job. The man is now able to stand although he looks quite weak. They both walked closer to them. Rodney and Eric greeted Reed with a sigh of relief. You're still alive, Rodney said with a relieved smile. Yeah, thanks to this girl. Asksa just smiled. Through her smile, Clyde could see that Asksa was happy to be able to do something useful. She looks proud of herself. The identities of the four people were still mysterious to Clyde. Without thinking too much, he used inspection on them. Character Information Name, Rodney String Race, Human Age, 28 Level, 1 EXP, 50-100 Private Attributes, Regressor Exclusive Skill, Regression, LV, Sword Slash, LV.1 Skill Point, 0 Player Stats, Strength, 2 Tenths, Stamina, 1 Tenth, Agility, 1 Eighth Magic power, 1 8th. Stat point, 0. Inventory. Degrade weapon, katana. Equals 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 equals. Character information. Name, Eric Hansen. Race, human. Age, 31. Level, 1. EXP, 30 slash 100. Private attributes, regressor. Exclusive skill, regression, LV, light of shield, LV.1. Skill point, 0. Player stats, strength, 2 tenths, stamina, 1 tenth, agility, 1 seventh, magic power, 1 eighth. Stat point, 0. Inventory. Degrade weapon, short sword. Degrade weapon, shield. Equals 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 Character information Name Mona Koss Race Human Age 23 Level 1 EXP 50 slash 100 Private Attributes Regressor Exclusive Skill Regression LV Sword Slash LV.1 Skill Point 0 Player stats, strength, 1 8th, stamina, 1 9th, agility, 2 tenths, magic power, 1 tenth. Stat point, 0. Inventory. Degrade weapon, katana. Equals 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 equals. Character information. Name, Reed Rivera. Race, human. Age, 26. Level, 1. EXP, 50 slash 100. Private Attributes, Regressor. Exclusive Skill, Regression, LV, Sword Slash, LV.1. Skill Point, 0. Player Stats, Strength, 2 Tenths, Stamina, 1 Ninth, Agility, 1 Ninth, Magic Power, 1 Tenth. Stat Point, 0. Inventory. Degrade Weapon, Longsword. Equals 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 equals. After seeing their attribute window, Clyde frowned, what is a regressor? Rodney approached Clyde and said, thanks for your help. If it weren't for you, we would have died. You'd better not take on a quest that's way above your abilities, Clyde replied. Rodney seemed to tighten his jaw. But he didn't deny that it was true. The situation went beyond our expectations, Rodney said. Clyde looked at Rodney and his three friends behind him then asked something that piqued his curiosity. Tell me something, said Clyde. What is Regressor? Hearing that, Rodney seemed to hear the sound of thunder in the distance. His chest suddenly thumped loudly. So did his three friends who heard Clyde's question. H. How did? Rodney took a deep breath and exhaled to calm himself. How did you know about that? I just know. Clyde looked at Rodney as if demanding an explanation. Rodney turned to his three friends. They all looked at Rodney with almost the same expression. We'd better go somewhere better to talk, Rodney said. 
Clyde nodded. I agree. They returned to the motel where Clyde, Asksa, and Sonia used to stay. They were all gathered in the room Clyde had stayed in earlier. After previously discussing amongst themselves, the four regressors decided to tell Clyde their true identities. But they will not tell everything in detail. Clyde, Asksa, and Sonia were surprised after hearing their explanation. You guys can go back to the beginning after you die. Sonia looked at them in disbelief. Yes, Rodney answered. How is that possible? Asksa asked. We also don't know who gave us this kind of power. That explains how they can fight like they already have experience, Clyde thought. That means you already know what's going to happen, said Clyde. They nodded. We knew what happened until day five, Eric said. Clyde frowned. Why only until day five? The regressors stared at each other. There's a very powerful monster on the fifth day. We can never beat it and always come back to start over, replied Reed. What monsters? Clyde asked with a pounding chest. An Outer God. Chapter 15 The First Outer Gods Sonia frowned at Rodney's answer. She had never heard of it before. But Sonia knew that name sounded pretty terrifying. Unlike Sonia, Clyde knew what the Outer God was about. But he didn't think that such a creature would exist in this apocalypse. Because Clyde spends his time reading novels in addition to playing games. He had a slight idea of what the Outer God was. Clyde swallowed his saliva. Then look at Rodney to ask. What does the Outer God look like? The regressors exchanged glances. The one who answered Clyde's question was Mona. We don't remember how it was. Mona looks like she is trying to find the answer in her mind. Yet the frown and expression on her face seemed to say that memory was something very difficult to achieve. No one has managed to remember its form. All we remember from day five is the feeling of hopelessness and immeasurable fear, said Reed. His body seemed to be shaking a little. Clyde bit his lip. Hearing their explanation about what would happen later made him feel scared. Even when he already had an advantage that no one else had in a disastrous situation like this. Playing in easy mode alone will not be enough to defeat the outer god. While thinking about this, Clyde stared at the four regressors. I think we should work together, said Clyde while looking at them seriously. We thought so too, replied Mona with a pleased expression. It was as if she had found new hope. I can make use of the knowledge they have. Clyde's intention was of course not to help them. But the knowledge possessed by people who have repeated this disaster several times is invaluable. We have to prepare early. The first day isn't over yet, said Clyde. What can we get on this day? There are still some monsters hanging around. We might be able to get EXP points from them to level up, Eric replied. Didn't all the monsters disappear once the boss was killed? asked Clyde with a confused expression. No. Actually, there are still a few that survive but they won't come out of their nests. It's as if they were deliberately hidden. Like secret in the game, hey. Clyde mumbled. We also need food. Even though Clyde wasn't feeling hungry at all right now, perhaps because of the effect of his stats, he knew that the effect wouldn't last long. They had to find food supplies. After everyone agreed, they exited the motel to go to the location indicated by the four regressors. The remaining ant monsters were hiding in the dark buildings and several houses. They killed the monsters and started earning enough experience to advance to the next level. But Clyde didn't get any more level ups. He who had reached level 10 after killing many monsters at once and the boss alone needed more EXP points than others to be able to level up. After hunting down the hiding monsters while gathering food, they returned to the motel. Almost all of them advanced to level 3. Except for Asksa who was still at level 2. Even so, Asksa wasn't at a disadvantage because she was only a healer. Clyde thought at this early stage, that Asksa had become a pretty good healer. With her healing skill reaching level 3, she could even treat Reed whose arm was about to sever until that man looked as healthy as ever. Once back at the motel, Mona went into Asksa and Sonia's room. Eric, Rodney and Reed were in one room. Clyde made it clear that he didn't want to share a room with anyone else. Before Rodney entered his room, Clyde asked. Tomorrow, what will we face? Rodney looked at Clyde with slightly anxious eyes. Zombie virus. Oh, classics. Clyde nodded his head. But the first chapter will be more difficult than the second chapter. Hearing that, Clyde frowned. Why? Tomorrow, everyone who is exposed to virus smoke for more than a minute will turn into zombies. That means the same as dying. 
then the zombies will start mutating every 10 minutes into a stronger form. How do we deal with the smoke? asked Clyde. There is a special gas mask that we have to find to block the effects of the virus smoke. Clyde nodded. Then, the boss. Rodney sighed before answering. As if to convey the toughest part of the story. The boss can control all zombies. He has sharp weapons, blunt weapons, and firearms. And also quite intelligent. Seems like quite a troublesome boss. Clyde thought. Thanks for the information. Get some sleep. Tomorrow will be a long day like before, said Clyde. Rodney stared fixedly at Clyde. I don't know how you got to be that strong. But, the four of us are grateful to have you here with us. Thank you. After saying that, Rodney turned around and went into his room. Clyde felt a strange feeling he had never felt before. Did someone thank him? It never happened before. But Clyde saw clearly from Rodney's eyes, that he was really sincere in saying that. Though Clyde just wanted to make use of their knowledge. Does he deserve that gratitude? Ha! Huh. Clyde sighed and left the motel. He cancelled his plans to sleep after hearing Rodney's explanation. Instead, he headed to the convenience store where the checkpoint was previously located. He walked over to the vending machine that sold skills. Clyde scrolled through the screen to select a skill he thought would be useful for tomorrow. The moon began to slip into the night sky. This indicates the night is getting late. Clyde came out of the convenience store carrying six Akil cylinders. Then he returned to the motel. He spends a lot of coins on these skills. The next day arrived. As soon as the sun began to reveal itself, a notification about the first chapter came. Attention! The first chapter will start now. The first chapter Undead Virus begins now. Chapter 1, Undead Virus Difficulty, B Objective Survive from viruses that turn humans into zombies and survive zombie attacks. Chapter 16 The next day. Clyde opened his eyes. The sound of notification echoed inside his head like an annoying alarm that he couldn't turn off. Clyde stretched and got up from the bed. Then he came out of the room fully clothed with a sword at his waist. As soon as he got outside it turned out that everyone was awake. They waited outside with worried faces. You ready? Clyde asked while looking at all of them. He knew it was a stupid question. Because even if they weren't ready, they had to do it anyway. Toxic gas will come out in a few minutes. For the newest chapter, the checkpoint will change, said Rodney. So you mean the people on the subway will lose their haven? Asked Asksa with a shocked face. Yes. Rodney nodded. Asksa looked like she wanted to say something but she immediately closed her mouth again. Clyde thought maybe she wanted to say that the people on the subway needed to be saved but soon realized that what she wanted was too much. Let's go. Clyde walked first toward the motel lobby. After that, he stopped and turned to all of them. Clyde took the six skill cylinders from his inventory and gave it to them. What skill is this? Mona asked with confusion on her face. The questions represent them all. Open it, Clyde said. They all knew that it was a cylinder skill. So they just opened it. Skill obtained, passive skill. Toxic Resistance, LV.1. They all get the same notification. Their eyes widened knowing the new skill they had acquired. How did you get it? Reed asked. I bought it, Clyde answered simply. But the price of this skill is quite expensive. I have a few more coins. Anyway, we should head out now. Clyde was already walking towards the exit. The six of them were naturally relieved after getting this skill. With Toxic Resistance, the smoke that turns humans into zombies does not affect them. However, the regressors knew that the skill's price was 500 coins. They couldn't possibly get it at this early stage. The reward coin from a rank B quest, which is the highest quest at this point, is only 300 coins. The four of them once again were grateful to have met Clyde. Let's go, said Rodney. They all followed Clyde out of the motel. Grey and green smoke coalesced and filled the city. At this time the smoke was still a thin smoke that only covered the road at ankle height. But later the smoke will get thicker and will be as high as the building. Passive skills are skills that do not need to be activated and will take effect once they are obtained. Sonia explains to Isksa who doesn't understand. Mona came closer to them and helped Sonia to explain. Where is the boss located? Clyde asked. The boss won't appear before the notification. Don't you know about that? Eric said. Ah, I see. I don't know. 
Clyde said flatly. Then what can we do? Well, we'll have to find a special gas mask that can ward off this toxic smoke, but... Clyde nodded in understanding. Then we should start killing zombies. Yeah. Okay. The seven of them walked the streets filled with smoke. The zombies began to appear from everywhere. There are a lot of zombies that appear right away. There may be hundreds of zombies appearing and all of them are bloodthirsty. The zombies immediately charged toward them. Clyde turned to Sonia and Mona. Give Asksa a chance to kill the zombies. All right. Sonia said. Sonia and Mona knew what they had to do. They both protect Asksa and then give her an iron pipe that they found on the road. Asksa hits the head of a zombie that has been weakened by Sonia and Mona with fear and disgust. But she did it anyway. Each zombie gives enough EXP to level up. But the zombies that appeared began to multiply and they began to struggle. Find a better place to fight. Clyde said to the six of them. Yes. Answer Rodney. But what about you? I can handle it myself, Clyde replied calmly. Rodney didn't question it any further and immediately led them to find the right place to fight this large zombie horde. Clyde fought alone because he needed more experience to level up. And also he can fight more easily if he is alone. Burning Hand, LV.3, is activated. From Clyde's hands, bursts of fire spread in all directions and instantly burned the walking corpses. In an instant, he had already killed dozens of zombies. You leveled up. A level up notification appeared. Clyde didn't stop and continued to attack. He killed the zombies with his sword and fire. Rodney takes the group into a shop and hangs in there. They kill zombies that pass through the door in turn. A large number of zombies will have no effect when they can only enter through one door in front of the shop. Several minutes passed. The new notification sounded in the air. Zombies will start evolving. Clyde heard it too. But he who was busy slaughtering zombies wasn't too worried. After all, he felt he could overcome these zombies even if they evolved for now. The zombies instantly changed. Their bodies began to be overgrown by sharp blades. They charged toward Clyde while swinging the sharp blades that grew on the hands, head, and chest. Some blades can also extend like tentacles. This is going to be even more troublesome. Clyde noticed the changes taking place around him. If indeed every ten minutes these zombies became stronger, it would be dangerous. Even with his high level and easy mode attribute, Clyde starting to get worried. Because for Clyde, vigilance and caution were indispensable in all situations. Especially in a life and death situation like this. Clyde cut off the sharp tentacle that was aimed at his head. Then he used his burning hand to burn the zombies around him. After that Clyde ran to find a better place. When the zombies began to change, he did not want to be in the middle of their siege. As he ran, Clyde saw someone standing on top of the building. The person wore a black hooded robe that covered his slash her entire face. Gruayaha. A zombie jumped at Clyde with both hands covered with sharp blades shaped like an axe. Clyde swung the elder glass sword to block the sharp blade. Then kick the zombie until it bounces back. Not wanting to waste time, Clyde started running again. He found a member of his group in a shop. Clyde ran towards the shop to regroup. Chapter 17 Where they came from the mysterious figure on the roof of the building stared down. His brown eyes peeked from the shadow of his hood. Who's that kid? The figure muttered to himself. He saw how Clyde fought against the zombies like someone with enough experience. It was not natural for someone who had experienced a strange apocalypse for the first time. Out of curiosity, the figure decided to look a little longer. After all, there was no way anyone would notice his presence here. The child looks very young but his strength looks great and his fighting ability is quite great. How could he fight like that when he was at this level? Even he and his group still have to fight hard. Even though they have more advantages than other players. He even already has a skill that is strong enough at this early stage. What has happened? I have to report this to the captain. After feeling enough to pay attention to the boy, the figure just disappeared like being blown by the passing wind. Clyde is still struggling to cut down all the zombies surrounding him. Even though he could easily kill them, the number of zombies seemed endless. So Clyde is still in trouble. In the end, he chose to join his other group members. Clyde breaks through hordes of zombies who have evolved so they have sharp blades on their bodies. Srot. Suddenly, Clyde's cheek was slashed by a blade that he didn't know where it came from. Clyde ignored that and continued to slash his elder glass sword. Craw. Craw. 
Craw. You leveled up. Clyde massacred all the zombies mercilessly. He beheaded them, pierced their chests and stomachs, and he also burned them. Zwoosh. The rotting and charred bodies of the zombies fell to the ground. Clyde stomped and jumped over them while slashing his sword repeatedly. You leveled up. When the number of zombies had decreased, Clyde could see something in the distance. That's it. Before long, the path to the shop where the rest of the group was located came into clear view. Clyde jumped while slashing then ran as fast as he could towards the shop. Asksa realized that Clyde was running toward them. Hey! Clyde is running over here. Asksa spoke to the others. The rest of the group responded to her words and turned in the direction Asksa pointed. It turned out that Clyde was indeed running toward them. Let's help him. Rodney said. How can we help him? Can't you see that our own situation is already difficult? Reed complained expressing his anxiety. Reed was right, they were even having a hard time holding off the constant waves of zombies trying to break through their defensive wall. Eric who was at the front while holding his shield grimaced, gritting his teeth with an expression of difficulty holding back their waves. Eric's body and face now had several slash wounds from the sharp blades of the zombies. Even though Isksa keeps healing him, the wounds keep appearing. In addition, there are also bite and scratch marks. Luckily he already has the toxic resistance skill, so he doesn't need to worry. Even if he gets hit by their attack, he won't turn into a zombie like them. Unfortunately, the skill couldn't shake off the pain he was suffering from. It turned out that Clyde didn't need their help to get to the shop. He broke through the horde of zombies himself with his strength. With the Elder Glass Sword, he slashed zombies and with Burning Hand he burned those who got in his way. You leveled up. Clyde forgot how many times he had leveled up since he first slaughtered the zombies. He didn't have time to count that now. He's coming. Asksa screamed. Among them, only Asksa can spare some attention for Clyde who is trying to reach them. Rodney, Eric and Reed work together to clear a path for Clyde so he can enter the store. When the road was open, Clyde immediately jumped with all his might into the store. He fell and rolled until he hit the wall. Asksa who turned towards him realized that there were several wounds on Clyde's face. She immediately ran to him and performed healing without saying anything. A soothing green glow covered part of Clyde's face. I'm fine, Clyde said. Let me be a bit useful person, Asksa replied. Hearing her reply, Clyde didn't say anything else and let her do her job. Clyde turned to all the people fighting at the store door. They won't last much longer. Clyde glanced at Asksa. Thank you. I'm better now. Clyde smiled faintly at Asksa. Asksa finished her healing feeling a little relieved as if a heavy burden had been lifted from her shoulders. Clyde stood up and walked towards them. Asksa followed beside him. Have you healed Eric yet? Clyde asked. Aska nodded. Yeah, I did. Good. Keep doing it like that. Clyde walked over and spoke in a bit of a shout at them. He had to shout because the wild roaring sounds of the zombies around were too distracting. We can start the offensive now. Rodney turned to him. What do you mean? I saw something outside. That seems to be where these zombies are spawning, Clyde said. You mean where this poisonous smoke appears? Rodney asked with a frown. No. I mean this is where these zombies are spawning. The remaining townspeople won't be enough to make this many zombies. So they must have come from somewhere else. Clyde explained. That sounds so preposterous. Rodney doesn't know about what Clyde said. In the previous regression, he and his friends only survived by hiding until the time limit was up. Are you sure? Rodney asked. Clyde nodded. Yes. We have to destroy it quickly if we want this to end. Rodney nodded and chose to believe Clyde's words. After all, he had already decided to believe in him. The two of them immediately explained what they were going to do next to Reed, Mona, Eric, and Sonia. After that, they started to make a move. Chapter 18 Pushing Through Eric pushed with all his might accompanied by loud groans and screams. Erg -a -a -a. Eric's strength is indeed stronger than his three friends. Among the four regressors, he is indeed the one with the highest strength and endurance. Several zombies were pushed back with annoying groan flares. Their sharp blades danced and whipped all over the place and scratched Eric's body. After that Rodney, Reed and Mona jumped out and slashed their swords at the zombies in front of them. Sonia also shoots arrows at high speed at the zombies. Meanwhile, Asksa keeps an eye on the group members to provide healing to anyone who needs it. 
Clyde jumped higher than the others and immediately activated Burning Hand. Burning Hand, LV3, is activated. Clyde sent fire at the zombies and immediately scorched them. After he landed, Clyde slashed his sword at incredible speed. All the group members who saw him froze in awe at Clyde's strength. In an instant, he had taken care of many zombies when they had not even moved from their place. Over here. Clyde shouted without looking back. When he didn't get a reply, only then did Clyde turn his head and see that they were still having a hard time. Damn it. In his heart, Clyde was starting to question whether joining them was the right decision. But in the end, he also stayed back and helped them. After Clyde came, the zombie hordes around them started to decrease for a while before spawning again. Over here. Clyde repeated himself because he was sure they had not heard him. Even though they had a hard time, with Clyde's help they started to push through the sea of zombies. Sonia. Sonia turned at Clyde's call. Can you aim at it? Clyde pointed to an organic green lump situated in the middle of the road. The lump looks like a cocoon with a predominant gray color. Meanwhile, there are transparent holes where the zombies come out. The lump is about one meter in size and beats in a regular rhythm like a heart. I will try it. Sonia answered. Everyone protect Sonia. Clyde shouted. Understood. They all shouted in unison. Sonia started aiming. With her private attribute ability, she can aim very easily even amid the zombies' siege. The distance between where they were and the lump was about 10 meters. With a sea of zombies horde between Sonia and her target. Tsiuyuyat. Arrow shot from Sonia's bow with incredible speed. Crop. The arrow stuck into the organic lump and dealt considerable damage to it. Even though it's just an arrow that looks small. The arrow was created with Sonia's magic power so the effect is much greater than ordinary arrows. As if realizing that it had taken damage, the organic lump beat even faster. As if showing signs of pain. Do it again. Clyde shouted again at Sonia in the middle of the fight. Turns out he had seen what was going on even though he was busy. Sonia nodded and drew her bow again. However, when she shot, the arrow missed. Sonia grit her teeth and cursed. But she pulled the bowstring again. She couldn't give up just yet while the other group members were working hard. This time Sonia channeled a lot of her magic power into her arrows. Then fire it. This time she was sure that she would hit it. Yet, her belief was betrayed by a zombie who suddenly jumped in front of her arrow. Crot. The arrow stuck in the zombie's head and immediately made him fall on the road. Fuck. Sonia swore loudly. She pulled back her bowstring to shoot again. But suddenly a sharp blade swung at her from behind the crowd of zombies. Tack. The sharp blade that came out of nowhere severed Sonia's bowstring. Making her gape with widened eyes. Oh, this is fucking great. Sonia cursed even louder. What happened? Asksa asked amid her panic. The question was immediately answered when she saw Sonia's bow. She couldn't say anything and just looked at Sonia with an expression as if to say that this was all very bad. Why did you stop? Clyde shouted in an annoyed tone. They cut my bowstring. Sonia shouted back in frustration. Clyde turned his head and stared at Sonia's bow. He gritted his teeth when he saw that it was true. Rodney, Reed, Eric and Mona also heard Sonia's answer so they also felt anxious. Okay, it can't be helped. I'll do it, Clyde said. You guys help me get closer. Finally, they returned to the way before. They broke through the horde of zombies with their limited strength. Clyde was starting to get worried because he felt that his magic power couldn't last much longer. The zombies that came turned out to be too many and kept spawning non-stop. He had drained his magic power to use Burning Hand since the beginning. And that is a loss for him. Now, he must fight alongside these people. At least when they managed to destroy the grey and green lumps, their burden would be reduced. Clyde asked for Eric's shield because he thought he would be better at using it. Eric was a little reluctant. However, in the end, he gave it up without wasting much time. Eric now only fights with his short sword. Clyde took the front position. With his strength, he can make the group break through the horde of zombies faster than Eric. 7 meters. 5 meters. 3 meters. I can see it. Clyde shouted. I'm going to jump. All group members nodded in understanding. They fought harder and harder to support Clyde. When he feel the distance is right, Clyde pushed his shield as hard as he could and then threw it. After that, he held the shoulder of a zombie in front of him to jump. 
Clyde then stomped on the heads and shoulders of several zombies. A moment later he jumped while activating Burning Hand. Burning Hand, LV3, is activated. Swoosh. Clyde threw a fireball at the green-gray organic lump. Boom. A huge explosion was created and burned the lump. Yet Clyde didn't stop there and kept attacking. Chapter 19 Limit Breaker Clyde continued to slash his sword at full power. Elder Glass Sword, the sword with a bluish transparent blade stabbed and slashed into the organic lump's body hard. From the green part of the lump, zombies started crawling appear. But Clyde didn't let them surface. Every time an arm or head appeared, Clyde slashed directly with Elder Glass Sword and decapitated it. The pounding on the strange lump seemed to get faster and stronger. Even Clyde was starting to feel the rhythm under his feet. Clyde became even more worried because he felt his body weaken. It's not a matter of stamina but something else. He knew that this feeling was because he has started to run out of magic power. Even with magic power at level 5, I'm in trouble like this. Clyde turned to his group members who were still trying to get closer. Their distance is not too far. But the zombies have come and surrounded them again, filling the path between Clyde and his group members. Seeing no other choice, Clyde pressed his palm against the surface of the lump. He intended to pour a large amount of magic power into this one attack. Burning Hand, LV3, is activated. Swish. A huge and powerful burst of fire shot out from Clyde's palm. The explosion spread to all parts of the green and grey lump. Cover it with a smoldering fire. The beat of the lump grew louder. Then a hissing sound came from it. Not long after, all the zombies in the vicinity stopped to attack the other group members. They turned to Clyde and immediately ran to him. Shit. Clyde also realized how difficult his current situation was. This lump turns out to be able to summon a horde of zombies to protect itself. That made the difficulty multiply many times over. However, Clyde also saw good development. The lump that couldn't stand the burst of fire started to look black and then melted. A little bit more. Clyde thought optimistically. The hordes of zombies were also charging toward him simultaneously. Their number of maybe a few hundred was intent on devouring Clyde. Like children trying to save their mother. Clyde looked at his group members. With their current state, they wouldn't be able to help him. Oh. Clyde was starting to think that this was all impossible. Most likely, actually, they would just have to hide until the time came and fight the boss to clear the second day. But I'm already here. There's no point in regretting this. Clyde steeled himself and chose to continue fighting. Yes. Now he just has to keep fighting and survive. Hi a a a arg. Accompanied by a loud scream, Clyde poured all of his magic power into his palms. The bursts of fire that came out were getting stronger. The speed of the scorching lump was also getting faster. Crease. 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 Multiple hissing sound was heard as part of the lump fell as it burned. Up until now, half of the lump had been burnt. Clyde slashed his sword around to dispel and kill the zombies around him. Clyde had already suffered several claw attacks and bites from the zombies. Some who tried to rip his back and arms were blocked by the defensive power of the Dark Knight coat. So Clyde only suffered in his face and the front of his hands that were not covered by the coat. Clyde gritted his teeth. A little bit more. Crease. 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 A large chunk of that lump started to collapse even more. Until finally there are only a few parts left. A little bit more. A few moments later. Finally, the lump was completely burned. Swish. Clyde's flames spread around as the lump finally disappeared and collapsed into black ashes. Suddenly, all the zombies that were surrounding Clyde fiercely fell helplessly. Like a robot that has lost its power source. Clyde panted hard. Even though he looked around and see that all the zombies had fallen, Clyde couldn't let his guard down. He turned his head in all directions looking for any possible danger. But he found nothing in the end. Instead, Clyde got a notification. Congratulation. You have accomplished the impossible task. You have destroyed a zombie spawner. New title unlocked, Limit Breaker, LV.1. Title effect, grants the power to raise the limit of all stats. As the level of the title increases, the stats limit will also increase. Clyde blinked his eyes a few times quickly. Wow. This is quite amazing, isn't it? It turns out that destroying the lump is something that is impossible at this early stage. Doing something out of the limit at this stage will give him a title. 
and the effect of that title was surprisingly good. If I can stack enough limit breakers, then I can increase my stats quite a lot. It will be very useful in the later stages to come. You did it. Suddenly, Rodney's voice came from beside him. He had suffered many injuries all over his body and his face looked tired. Behind him, Eric, Reed, Mona, Sonia, and Asksa didn't look any better. Even Sonia and Reed had fallen on the road. It's only natural that they aren't that useful. We really shouldn't destroy the zombie spawner at this early stage. It's okay, Clyde said. Oh, yeah. Did you get a notification? I didn't get anything, Rodney replied. Does that mean, I'm the only one getting that title, thought Clyde. If that was true, then he should keep it a secret for now. Suddenly, another notification appeared before their eyes. This time, this notification is not only received at Clyde but by all members of the group. Sorry for the delay. Something extraordinary has been done. So it took us a long time to do the calculations. You have killed all the zombies in this area by destroying the zombie spawners. You gain experience from all of the dead zombies. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. Everyone gets level up notifications many times. Chapter 20 Another Group All members of the group made stunned expressions. But soon an expression of happiness replaced that. Whoa, amazing. I'm level 30. Reed shouted after taking a look at his attribute window. He still couldn't believe what he was seeing so he glanced at his attribute window that floated into his field of vision once again. Mona, Eric, Rodney, Sonia, and Asksa saw the same thing. And their reactions were the same as Reed's. Their eyes opened wide in shock. We should only reach level 30 on the third or fourth day, Rodney muttered in a dreamy tone. It was as if he still couldn't believe the number written on his attribute window. Clyde also checked his attribute window to see how much his strength had grown. Character Information Name, Clyde Cross Race, Human Age, 18 Level, 55 EXP, 0-1000 Title, Limit Breaker, LV.1 Private Attributes, Easy Mode Player Exclusive Skill, Inspection, LV.3 Weapon Mastery, LV.1 Burning Hand, LV.3 Toxic Resistance, Passive, LV.1 Skill Point, 66 Player Stats, Strength, 6 tenths, Stamina, 4 tenths, Agility, 6 tenths, Magic Power, 5 tenths Stat Point, 63 Inventory A-Grade Weapon, Elder Glass Sword, Upgradable Dark Knight Coat, Defense LV.5 High Grade Health Potion, X3 Medium Grade Mana Potion, X3 5,800 coins. Equals 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 equals. Clyde nodded in satisfaction seeing how his attributes had grown so much. Besides him leveling up countless times, he also obtained a title. For this one, Clyde will keep it a secret. Maybe Clyde wouldn't ever say that either. Clyde turned his head in all directions. But he didn't see any more zombies attacking. The thick green smoke was no longer visible within a radius of several kilometers from where they stood. However, Clyde still saw the smoke rising high in the northern sky. That area still seems to be facing zombie attacks. Clyde looked at the northern area that was still covered in green smoke thoughtfully. He managed to destroy the zombie spawner in this area and killed all the zombies numbering in the hundreds. This made him, and all his group members, level up a lot. This means he got a very large power development drastically. Clyde thought of going to places that were still being threatened by zombies and destroying the zombie spawners again. That way he would level up quickly. But, wouldn't that look flashy? That one thought was enough to make him hesitate. But the temptation of a great level up made his heart waver even more. Should he be careful not to stand out? Because he doesn't want to attract too much attention more than now. Clyde, what were you thinking? Asksa asked while walking towards him. She then looked at Clyde's hands which were full of wounds. Your hands. Asksa said in a worried tone. Nothing to worry about. I'm fine. It's just a scratch, Clyde said. Then Clyde put the elder glass sword into the scabbard at his waist. Even if ones leveled up in this apocalypse, they would not return to their original state like in the game. They will continue to bear the wounds they experienced. 
Clyde didn't feel anything in his body from the zombie scratch on the top of his hand. That means unlike in the movies, these zombies won't turn humans with scratches or bites. Let's go back to the motel, Clyde said. He approached the rest of the group and told them to go back to the motel and rest. The group members walked with happy looks on their faces even though their bodies were covered in wounds. It must be because they had gotten something far beyond their expectations when they left the motel this morning. That is a lot of leveled up. The pain in their bodies was nothing compared to what they had received. Somewhere else, another group is hiding in a building. The group consists of five people. But one of them had not returned from his reconnaissance duty. Those who were here consisted of two men and two women. They tried their best not to make a sound so that the zombies outside this door would not notice their presence. One of the men among them started to speak in a very low voice. Where's Albert? He's doing reconnaissance, did you forget, a young-looking woman, maybe in her teenage, replied in a suppressed irritated tone. Yet. Yeah. But why isn't he back yet? The man glanced at his watch. Nine minutes have passed. Be patient, one of the men with a stern face said. Re. Oh. The man looked the oldest of them. His hair is still full but slightly turned silver in a few places. With his ability, Albert will return safely, the man added. Hearing him speak, all the members of the group calmed down again. As if what he said would become the truth for this group. The sound of zombie footsteps outside sounded terrible. They walked with fast steps accompanied by a hoarse disturbing voice. Zombies will start evolving. The voice sounded in their heads. The four people were suddenly enveloped by a feeling of fear. Their minds filled with thoughts about how the zombies would change. It's okay, the stern-faced man said with a smile. We'll be fine if we hide here. The man said trying to calm them down. But the only person who felt slightly better at his words was the young girl. The other two people looked the same. The man and woman who looked grown up didn't feel that everything would be fine. But they stay silent. The older man had a reason why he could stay calm in a situation like this. However, that reason would only be his and that man named Albert, the man who was now going on a reconnaissance, to keep. The sound of zombie footsteps outside sounded even louder. No one knows what they have turned into. If their footsteps were that loud, it was certain that they would turn enormous. Shortly thereafter Albert came through the wall. Everyone was immediately surprised at his arrival. Albert was the man in the robe who had been observing Clyde earlier. He drew closer to the stern-faced man and whispered. I see a very strong person. 